Welcome everybody to episode 9, Rise of Real Time. My name is Ryan, and with me as always is the Snoke to my Kylo Ren, Robbie. <laughs> Hi Ryan, how's it going? Um, does that mean I'm supposed to like get killed by you at some oh, point? I didn't think about that. Yeah, so oh, I should have done it again. <laughs> Sorry, that, that was attempt three for those of you missing out. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. I did not think about that. I'm yeah. I'm sorry about that. That's all right. I mean, we don't we don't know where the story of the new one's going to. There might be a, a something to to Kylo Ren in this one. I don't it, know. It could be a resurgence. I mean, the Emperor is in it. Yeah, we'll so we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this later. Soon, yeah. <laughs> so um, we'll start off with a correction from our last episode. Do you want to explain more on oh, this? Oh yeah. So so our loyal loyal listener Brendan uh, pointed out just that. the one so far. Please, <laughs> more people listen. Share it around. Um, pointed out that I made a big mistake uh, last time. I was thinking of Paul Rudd. We we're talking about Paul Rudd um, couldn't appear in the new Halloween sequel, Halloween Kills, because he's doing Ghostbusters. And I made the mistake of saying he was in Halloween H two O, which is a good movie. Mm-hmm. But I was actually confusing it with Halloween uh, Five. I think it is Curse of Michael Myers. Yeah. Um, and he plays the older version of Tommy Doyle, which is the kid that J.B. the Curtis babysat in the first film. So yeah, I made a big balls up there so i don't know but that means that now i'm confused as whether or not he was supposed to come back and play that character and that was the idea to have him play the same character again mm, just as a grown-up a grown-up well that's what he was in this, the other version of um of halloween that he was mm. in but whether or not it was supposed to be that again or he was going to play a different character i'm not sure now so uh yeah it was a massive massive balls up on my my home. Um, but yeah, uh, it was mostly, uh, it was the film that was released before H2O, which is why I got mm. confused. And it mostly was ignored by that movie and pretty much every movie since, because the, the later movies have been pretty much, well, the sequels to the original movie have pretty much been ignored and they've kind of, the new one's obviously just a direct sequel to the first movie. So yeah, you get a lot of that in franchise movies as well. You sort of have weird movies somewhere in the middle of it, just get, get ignored canonically well that's like the things with terminator and it's the things yep. with the jurassic world kind of ignores supposedly La- the lost world and um uh, jurassic park 3 whether or not that's true or not we don't know they've never officially confirmed that but it on um, unofficially they've said that's supposed to be the case so. yeah there's no reason at this point in the movies that really say otherwise other than the fact that they reopened the park and, and yeah the original one yeah anyway. so and because of that brennan you will be getting a prize sent to you perhaps <laughs> We don't know what it'll be. We don't, we don't know what it'll be, but we'll send you something. DM us and we'll send you something nice. Maybe. We'll <laughs> Maybe. <see. laughs> no, we definitely will. All right, we'll crack on with the news. Disney have got five films with over a billion dollars this year. Yeah, and there's and still more to come. Yeah, still more to come. This what is the, the hell? So it's crazy. So out of this, Lion King is now the highest grossing animated film worldwide, which is ridiculous. Is it animated though? Yes. We've had this discussion yeah, it's before. It's, it's actually it is, it's but yeah. It's animated. So that's what they're classing, and they're classing it personally. So the other stat that I pulled up, which has been slowly dropping, but only just, is Disney has over 35% of all tickets sold this year in the United States. That's insane. That's one of the only, highest. We're not even halfway through the ninth month. No, and they've that's still crazy. got Frozen 2 yep. and Star Wars Episode Nine to come out, which are going to be massive. So um, I suspect by the end of the year it'll be closer to forty percent, which is one studio to pull out. I don't think that I don't think that's the highest that's any of any year. I think like one other studios in the previous, maybe even Disney, have had like 31, 32 yeah. percent, and that's been considered quite high, usually in the upper twenties. Um, but to be close to forty is just that's. I I, I reckon Frozen will probably push it to forty, and then Star Wars probably closer to fifty. You, in, in my opinion, you, you reckon it's getting close to half of all tickets? Yeah, that's if that happens, that is just crazy. And this is the thing, like, obviously there's this controversy kind of surrounding the idea of a mon- monopoly essentially created by Disney, especially now owning Fox. And, um, and what th- came with and that? I don't even think I don't even think this includes the Fox ticket sales because I think Fox, part of the Fox entities of what came out there earlier, was before Disney owned it, so it's still classed as a separate thing. Yeah, that would make sense. So if I actually, I didn't even go look at the stats of what Fox was classed at for the year, but technically Disney made that profit. So that's probably even more. Mm, it's just, probably added on top of that. Yeah, which would add on top of that percentage, which would maybe actually definitely take it to 50 if mm. you combine that. And that's just crazy. Easily. Now, speaking of Disney, we've had D23 earlier as well, and there was a lot came out of that. Yeah, I, I think I, a lot unexpected too. Uh, there was a lot of unexpected stuff. Um, I've written a list of some of the the crazy stuff that was mentioned, and um, 
I think I think we'll just start a little bit about Disney Plus. I clearly this is what they're hoping to launch as a Netflix killer. Yeah, and um, there's a lot of content on there. If not killer, probably more of a competitor. Well, it, it's for the Disney fans. I, I, I think it's, aside from the fact that obviously the content's not going to be as old as skewed, but it's going to have like your entire archive of Disney, all your Marvel, mm-hmm. all your Star Wars, um, heaps of Fox material. Like, yep. I think Simpsons is going on there. Like. That's that's one of the biggest draw cards. There was a news article I just saw the other day saying that the uh, company did an independent poll around the world and all the countries that are getting Disney Plus at launch, which mm-hmm. includes New Zealand. Yeah. Um, and the top of the list was Simpsons. Yeah. And the second was Star Wars Clone Wars. <laughs> yeah. So like. And both well, they're, they're both pretty popular in their own right as well. With, yeah. You know, probably with the same fans, but you know different degrees of fans too it's like how people were saying you know like obviously not here but in the states like one of the biggest things that people watch on netflix is friends and that's yeah. leaving the service next year so um what sort of impact that'll have on netflix next year in the states is like to be seen and so that's obviously a big thing to get people attached to this like if they even if they just want the simpsons or clone wars they get all the other stuff they want in, you know, yeah. as well but they've got the Part stuff the they cost. want and at a very cheap cost and so i'll be very interested to see what sort of impact this has on netflix viewership mm-hmm. like when people will go ah, i'm not so fussed about netflix stuff compared to i wanted more disney or you know there's a particular tv show like friends is leaving oh simpsons fine or whatever yeah, absolutely. nbc's thing wherever um friends ends up you know for example so that'll be very interesting i think um but it's a pretty not a very expensive price, all things considered, for the amount of content, and it's including. I don't know if you saw this, and this wasn't at the D twenty three, but it's uh, there's been a trial thing going on in Europe. You see, all the Marvel TV series from the nineties have been included. No, so yeah. Oh no, actually, I did. Yes. Yeah, so Sorry, because like uh, the the X Men series yep. and Spider Man, Spider Man, and all those from the nineties, Iron Man. Um, so that's a big draw cap mm. for a lot of people as well because they were very big. Um, successful cartoon series especially the x-men animated series yeah I definitely mean, a lot of people grew up with that us included yes um so at d23 they mentioned a lot of what they were um launching um the first thing i've uh, written down here is uh Le- the lady and tramp movie which i mm-hmm. thought was actually getting a th- proper theatrical release but obviously was being made directly it's kind of not like uh, lion king in that it's got humans in it and they've got do- actual dogs but they've done the animation on their mouths yeah um so i'm just weirded out by it because i saw the bit in the poster they haven't got it in the trailer with the, the plain spaghetti and mm. the meatballs it's like it just looks weird on the poster i don't even know what it's gonna look like in person yeah. and the trailer's kind of a little bit like eh. yeah anyway so that's launching when disney plus launches um there was an anime film announced for, called ray and the last dragon which has got a huge amount of um like fam- well not famous people attached our famous people attached but like the back end's been like the, the uh, cast, the director, the um, writers and stuff have all come from other big backgrounds. So they're launching that as a big animated film. Um, they announced that Kit Harrington is joining the Eternals cast for mm-hmm. Marvel. As, as well, along with uh, Angelina Jolie. Yeah. Is another big name. Black Panther 2 got an, an announcement of a release date. We knew it was coming because it was mentioned at the earlier Comic Con event, but it's actually coming out now in May 2022. Um, they announced uh, a whole bunch of new TV shows on top of the stuff that they'd already mentioned. So they've got a series of Miss Marvel, one of Moon Knight, and a She-Hulk TV show. They were all announced. And I um, think there's there's the rumors going around that um, I think we touched on this on the last episode of Keanu Reeves potentially being in the MCU, and mm-hmm. I think one of the names thrown about is Moon Knight. So oh, I okay. guess watch this space. They also did show footage of the other shows they had previously announced, including the animated What Ifs, mm-hmm. um, as well as Fa- Falcon, the Winter Soldier, and One Division. Um, Wonder Vision apparently looks really wacky and off the wall and had like this kind of weirdness to it and Falcon the Winter Soldier was what you expected and mm-hmm. we talked about um, Zemo being mentioned so they being in it yeah and they've also announced that in Wonder Vision they're going to have Kat Dennings character from Thor oh, in yes, it as well however right. that's going to work considering I, it's set in the 60s time travel yeah, dimensions going to be but, yeah, something and then they reconfirmed which I didn't write here but the Loki thing was going to like we talked about last time they reissued the idea that Loki was going to be related to the Loki that escaped in Endgame so. yeah and I, I think I'd heard somewhere too that I think it's only rumour and or speculation at this time that Wanda is potentially going to be in the next Doctor Strange film. Oh, no, it was well. mentioned as well. Yep, that yeah. was confirmed. So, yeah. Um, so, that's possibly how they get to the 60s and how WandaVision comes about. Well, the ultimate di- dimensions, because it's yeah. a multiverse thing that they've got going on there, which explains how there's even another version of the vision. Um, there was two uh, kind of doco y back- kind of things. Uh, one was with Kristen Bell called Encore, which was to do with. Um, uh, singers i think it was like a school choir or something i can't remember mm. i did write this down knowing this and now i've forgotten and also the world according to jeff goldblum which was jeff goldblumy 
Yeah, I don't know how it'd be to describe it. If you watch the trailer, he even makes a pun, a really bad pun, but it, like, but because it's him, it's a great pun. Yeah, um, it works. It works about him, um, yeah, learning stuff. It's very weird, um, but I suspect it'll be a good hit, like, because people just think he's quirky and eccentric. Yeah, like, it, it, I. I think people are convinced he's an alien, like literally, yeah. like <laughs> yeah, come to Earth to just learn. Just not in Earth Girls Are Crazy, yeah, from the nineties with Gina Davis and uh, Adam Sandler and oh, Earth Girls, Girls Are Easy, yeah, yeah, Earth Girls Are Easy, yeah, yeah, yeah. from, from yeah. the late eighties, yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah. It's potentially that's how it started. He actually is an alien, and he's just stayed here, and he's just changed his name to Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, he took over. Maybe that's how it started. <laughs> yeah, it was an actual actor, Jeff Goldblum. It was that existed until 1987, and then the, the actual alien took his place. Yeah, because <laughs> that's why Jeff Goldblum existed before then. But he wasn't near as weird. No, I um, as I was going to say before, we slightly digressed. Um, <laughs> the way I kind of see it is that it, it's probably going to be like a um, an Attenborough sort of thing, but Jeff Goldblumy. Yeah, he, well, he deals with uh, like everyday objects, like how shoes are made, and mm. like stuff like so it's, it's definitely a discovery channel sort of thing yeah well it's kind of it reminds what well, kind of it reminds me of uh, i think stephen fry did something really similar to that like about everyday things That's right, but it's too. but it's not nearly as eccentric as it's quirky Jeff yeah quirky as Jeff Goldblum's gonna do. um there was a, a christmas movie that will be at launch called noel it's got anna kendrick and bill hader um they're playing the kids of santa i think and mm-hmm. um so bill hader's character is called nick and he goes missing i think and he's supposed to take over the post of santa and he doesn't want her and mm. she has she gets tasked to find him it looks very family friendly what you expect um, yeah, typical christmas movie yeah with a bit of comedy kids. and stuff yeah uh there was an, a couple of animated series based on pixar um there's one called monsters at work which is post monsters inc it literally takes up picks up exactly at the end which is about these uh the some of the monsters that were coming into work who now have to change from scaring to making kids laugh yeah and then uh, a series of like like kind of i think it's supposed to be the aimed at like preschool or early childhood thing with forky from toy story 4 and he asks questions about life um, so it's just called Forky, Forky Asks. They've got a bunch of shows or uh, returning as movies um, or shows. There was Phineas and Ferb movie. Uh, Lizzie McGuire is re- like, it's ridiculous. Yeah, Lizzie Br- McGuire coming back, back. with, um, oh, I've forgotten her name now. The original Lizzie McGuire. Yeah, they just, <laughs> yeah, uh, in her 30s. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the most ridiculously titled High School Musical, the musical, the series. Yeah. Which is basically the idea of like, a school that makes a musical based on high school musical but it's so it's a musical musical but it's a tv series so that's what's called the series yeah weird yeah it seems a bit <laughs> odd it's like why not just call it glee the musical or something you know, high school it's, musical high school mu- high school musical the series or high school yeah, musical ex- exactly encore or something and a Muppets Muppets Now series, which there was supposed to be two different Muppet series that were originally were announced. One of them has been cancelled already. Um, it was going to be more like the Muppet Show, I think. Yep. No, sorry. It was no. This one's more like the Muppet Show. Muppet Show Muppets Now is like the Muppet Show. The other one was going to be a, like a, almost a sequel to the Muppets movies. It took place after the Muppets movies in the eighties and was set in the eighties, but it's been scrapped because apparently the um, Disney weren't really happy with the direction. It was a bit too maybe adult for the platform. So yeah, they were all for Disney Plus. Then, on top of all that, was a bunch of Star Wars stuff, which I'll let you talk about. Yep. So, I I was just shocked by some of these. I think a lot of them were kind of speculation for like the past few years. Like I I we knew of the Clone Wars was getting its final season to tie that up into a nice little ball because a lot of people weren't happy with how it. I'm saying this in air quotes. Finished initially so now we're getting an actual final season there was also the mandalorian trailer dropped mm. as well which looks all right for now it's, i suppose they want to keep their cards close to the chest they don't want to show too much too early it visually looks really good yeah. like it looks like it fits perfectly in the universe and why things have been set um it's very weird seeing um uh what's his name Werner herzog okay. that's right uh, it's very weird seeing Werner herzog as an actor in this that's really <laughs> off-putting to me like i'm just used to him as a director and he's like very interesting opinions about life mm. and so i see him acting in this is very unusual to me but other than that i it looks appealing like yeah be interesting It'd definitely be a lot of people that are big fans of boba fett and or Django fett would would definitely tune in i mean to me it's star wars so i'll probably watch it anyway mm. i'll be honest there's good good um production crew behind it like a favro and yeah uh taika and all that sort of stuff i've worked on episodes so that'll be interesting too yeah 
Uh, there was also a Cassian Andor Rogue One prequel series. Yeah, I'm. I, I like the idea of it in some sense, but not in others. Like, I because I think, I think we've talked about this before as well. Personally, like the whole thing with um with Rogue One was that bit at the start where he ended up killing the guy because he was going to give away the secrets because he was too yep. nervous. Kind of added these gray, shades of grey to the rebellion, which exists. You know, you've got to be they're, they're spies and you know, infiltrators mm. and stuff, so they can't always be clean and tidy about things and i kind of like that idea but i don't know if i wanted to see another series with him i'd be more interested in seeing others from the resistance and the time period having to do these sorts of things but obviously they want to tie this directly but the problem with that i see is that we know where his story is going to end yeah so we're only just inevitably getting there and my other worry is that they start making like these really weird foreshadowy jokes you know how people do that yeah, sometimes yeah yeah, yeah. We, we know where it's going so let's just you know, throw this in there, go, oh, they're referencing what will come later and he yeah. dies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, it, it spoilers could for Rogue but... One, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Not that you didn't know. Yeah. Also, spoilers, it's a better Suicide Squad than Suicide Squad. That is true. That is um, true. And also, one thing which I think a lot of people were finally excited about after years of denying it and going, yeah, I'm just waiting for the call or, you know, I'd be jump okay. on it the first plane there ewan mcgregor came out on stage with kathleen kennedy and confirmed that they're making an uh, obi-wan prequel series which is which is interesting because it's given them a platform to do it because obviously there was a call when they were going to be doing these like when they did the the han solo film yep. and all that sort of stuff that there was maybe a movie but this gives them a better outlet to do it. Mm. They won't maybe last longer but they can shoot it like a movie and just yeah, strip it out of like eight or ten episodes so it's quite it's a it's a good way to resolve that i think it's a safer bet than say the han solo film was yeah um because that was a big risk and obviously it wasn't the biggest payoff no i think um, there was many issues that, with that whereas that, that might really have worked better out. as a series as well now when you look at it so yeah especially now they might turn around and go eh, let's kind of make it an animated series well or they might even come back to the same series. actors and make a series out of it instead yeah. of making a film sequel they could easily go right instead of making a sequel and following the lines we will still want to finish the story but we can turn it into a disney plus series now because yeah. yeah. we know there's a built-in audience for it yeah and they've confirmed that the scripts are all done and they're going to start shooting i think is it spring next year yeah pretty think, early, yeah. yeah the spring next year american time, time that is so more north than the hemisphere yeah so yeah that, that'll be definitely interesting that my one criticism about that is that when you and mcgregor came out on stage you didn't go hello there <laughs> like yeah that, that would just would have been to, to use a wrestling term that would have been the biggest pop <laughs> in that hall just for him to come out microphone in hand just to go hello there <laughs> everyone would have lost their shit yeah it would have been i think i agree with that it's a missed opportunity unfortunately i guess we'll move sideways away from the disney plus stuff but still stay related to star wars which mm -hmm. was that obviously there was a trailer for the next star wars film yep the final one and a poster um i again i'll let you talk about these things because you're much more bigger star wars fan than i am <laughs> not that i don't enjoy star wars don't get me wrong but you just yeah, know things i've, I've dedicated I more of my life to it sadly it's true S sadly or unsadly however Unsad you want to look at it unsadly i don't know that's not a word i'm i'm not england englanding england, 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 england. <laughs> i'm not englanding today yeah that's great um, Maybe in. yeah so there was the new trailer dropped we got to see more of what was going on we didn't see any emperor obviously because you know, they don't want to ruin that apart from the laugh from the first trailer. I was going to say, you heard, you heard, yeah, it's, you heard stuff and that's what you've heard. Yeah. Um, so you see uh, Ray and Kylo Ren fight on what looks to be remains of the Death Star or one of the Death Stars. We're not sure which no. at this point, but as I think we discussed in a previous episode that it's definitely the Death Star because you can tell from a turret and what looks to be the trench or something. Mm. Um, a, a lot of people online are kind of thinking that it's maybe on indoor and somehow indoors become flooded or seems, something because seems, of that. Seems a bit excessive. I think, yeah, but I think it, it's it more likely to be another planet, planet that was nearby. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I do remember I was going to say, you were saying about the, um, the death star. I think they've, they've, someone, I think maybe Abrams or something had confirmed that it's definitely is the case yeah. as well since, um, which is good. Um, yeah. But then you were talking about. Sorry, I was going to bring this back. You were talking about the emperor. Then they released the poster and put his face on it. Yeah, yeah. They put yeah they put his hood at <laughs> hooded least, face. Yeah, it's just. I was like, well, it's a bit on the nose, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I thought the, the laugh wasn't so subtle anyway. So yeah, yeah and they're, they're just trying to really hammer it home more. I guess at this point, yeah, that I, the emperor is back in some form or another. 
I just want to. I want to make sure. I don't know if you saw this. The nerds on the internet, for lack of a better term, <laughs> yeah. um, noticed that um, there's a, a VFX goof in the uh, in the trailer where they're fighting on the um, oh, yep. platform, and this. he doesn't have the cape shadow, yeah. the, the reflection, the reflection in the water. Of the cape. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't. I didn't. I was like, I didn't notice that at all. I would not have noticed that. And there's like, there's like, I read. I well, I didn't read. I read one, but I saw about a dozen articles yeah. about it. <laughs> so, I, I think I actually saw a video on it of like <laughs> ten, like top ten VFX effects yeah, VFX effects yeah, yeah top 10 VFX <laughs> missed in like studio trailers or something like that and that was one of them and that was one of them it was them. probably launched like, because of that story yeah, yeah. I was like yeah I was, I was definitely like oh it's a day for the nerds on the internet yeah which which kind of begs the question is is that puddle CG or is his cape CG in reality I think the cape yeah. I think he would have been without cape and for, for movement and stuff with yeah. the idea of adding it in CG but who knows? Maybe yeah, both. Yeah. It was I mean, green screen, obviously, but yeah. And I mean, maybe now that I don't know, it's probably had all this atten- unwanted attention. I guess you could say maybe someone will go, "Oh shit, let's draw that in." Yeah, I'll get, yeah. get fixed. It'll get fixed. Yeah, just for the final. Especially now that people have drawn attention to it, but even before, and it may have been overlooked and get fixed. It's anyway. possible. So, yeah, yeah. trying to rush trailers out for stuff. stuff yeah, gets wh- missed. Well, exactly. Um, it was interesting i just saw i think i don't know if you saw it there's an honest trailer for the aladdin film and they yeah. actually did the comparison between the trailer version of will smith and the final version That's you can right, actually yeah. see they've adjusted the lighting the reflection and stuff to make them look less creepy looking mm. and it actually works it's actually surprisingly a big change you don't realize how just that little bit of t- the time they had to fix that shot has made a big difference um he looks a little less creepy a little maybe, maybe that's what they'll do with sonic yeah, hope we'll so. see. Well, that's the idea, isn't it? Like, why it's been delayed. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, we, we should probably move slightly sideways yeah, from we'll, Disney, we'll but it still, with Disney. still involves Disney. Is that obviously the big news that came out Marvel wise recently is that Sony has decided that they didn't want to strike the deal that Disney wanted for the use of Spider Man. Mm. So the, the back and forth is that basically uh sounds like Marvel and slash Disney wanted more profit sharing of the outcome of us of the spider-man films but they're also willing to put the money into it because right now the idea i think is that sony pays like 95 percent of the cost or pays 100 percent of the cost and mm. marvel walks away with like five percent of the profits yep. even in the marvel-based films that have spider-man in them so they get a percentage based on ones like civil war or whatever yeah whereas that sounds like they wanted to do 50 50 we'll pay half the cost and get half the profits and sony's like nah we 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 want to we, we don't have the big juggernaut that you have we want to and and the, there was a really great point that someone made, which is that we're getting to that point, and this is going back to the comment earlier about the um, monopoly that Disney has, that people are defending Sony as if like they're the underdog studio. Yeah. It's like Sony's a pretty big studio. They're not a small company, and yet they are in the, the scale of Disney. In the scale right of now. what Disney's bought in the last, what, which is 10 crazy. years? You know, Sony is pretty small. And there's so there's arguments from both sides, like for um, uh, Jeremy Renner's come out going, Sony shares Spider Man, like, don't hold out, like, this yeah, works give because it back of, give it back to us. Um, uh, other people going, no, you know, Sony should have the ability. And what does this mean for the director? And what does this mean for Tom Holland? And Holland's got a certain agreement for other films. Yeah, I think he's still got a contract for another three or four. I don't know if it's I three think. or four, but it's definitely something. And then this obviously also belies the idea that, um, you know, the, the, they're like, well, obviously the uh, uh, Kevin Feige can't be involved and yeah. you know, he was shepherding the direction of the character. Will the Sony movies be as good as the, the previous two Spider-Man films when they did the standalone ones? Um you know, and then the Sony uh, executive—I don't know if she was like a CEO or whatever—said, "You know, we 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 thank him, and he's definitely been a, a key asset of making this new version of Spider-Man. But he's not the only talented person that put this, these movies together, and we, you know, we can definitely do this because people are burned by the other two lots of Sony play-ups with yeah. the Tobey Maguire and the Andrew Garfield and the Andrew Garfield series, the way they went. Um, uh, and obviously, there's this whole thing with Spider-Verse. Yeah, when where they're going with that." And then also leads to whether or not they can do a crossover with the other Spider-Man characters that they now own now that they're not beholden to Tom Holland being part of that MCU thing. But that gets messy because it means that while Tom Holland can maybe in a movie with other um, Sinister Six villains, for example, yeah. we'll get to that shortly, um, that then means by extension they are part of the MCU because by having his Spider-Man in there, even if you don't see them in the MCU, they still exist in that universe. Yeah. So that gets very messy. I don't know how they're going to resolve that. They just keep him separate and have their own thing and then just have like Venom and all these things separate. 
and that's where I was going with this obviously that Venom the big question now is whether or not they have that crossover with Venom because obviously the first one was very successful and a lot of people were were hoping for that as well for a good crossover from them yeah and then yeah this gets very messy so very interesting where they go with it but um, I mean on a personal basis I can see both sides I can see where Disney Mm. wants to kind of strike out and say it's more it's you know we'd like to own more of the character essentially um and also why sony would turn around and go no we don't want to change the deal like this is our deal and we want to stick with it and we're happy with it we, we don't mind sharing but we want it and under, under our terms because we have the rights you've sold us the rights years and years and years ago so yeah it'd be interesting to see where it goes yeah. i just don't want it to go down the fantastic four route no no and i mean the, the way i initially saw this or I'd sort of read into it before you know sort of any major articles or stories came out about it uh, is that i thought sony are just having a whinge that spider-man has made more money under disney than it did under, under them under yeah. themselves but now it's come out that it's kind of both sides are at fault and they're not really coming to terms on a mm. on something together and now and now that you got the people at sony saying the door is basically closed and the yeah. people marvel basically saying the same thing which means it's not going to change at least any time in the very short future um, but you never know things could change things i mean they got spider-man in there in the beginning so you know something happened that nobody expected to have happen so you know something could change again who knows yeah it could be a year or, or two we just could, don't could know be never, just could be never could be never yeah exactly you know we're um, holding out hopes exactly but as i mentioned venom 2 we were talking last time um at the time rumored was andy circus was coming into direct mm-hmm. was pretty much confirmed pretty much right after we recorded <laughs> yeah, like, almost like the day after day or, or two yeah. after harrison was also confirmed as returning yeah, harrison yeah i um that's a spoiler for people who haven't seen it i still haven't seen it but i don't know this which is ridiculous and it starts shooting in november like that's really really it's soon. pretty soon yeah um, it's like two, what two months away from yeah, this recording about two months, yeah depending on when it goes out and you're listening to this it could be tomorrow <laughs> could be tomorrow exactly. <laughs> just like how circus was announced the next day yeah i i i mean i can't say anything because i haven't seen the first one no. but I, I, I have a copy of it i need to watch it a blu-ray copy and i have to watch it so it's on my list uh, the, the, the only thing i know about it is that we are venom are we? Just like we are grouped. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thanks. That's all I know about the Venom film, oh, cool. other than Tom Hardy being the main Tom, actor. The main actor. <laughs> That's about it. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll move on. I'll let I'll let you talk about this one because yeah. you've got you've got the photo somewhere. In I room? did. I I uh, said it to you earlier as well, but I've got it here to bring up too. I'll let um, you bring it up. This is the it. Suicide Squad. Uh, James Gunn Suicide Squad uh, cast has been announced. I think some of them we already knew um hang on give me a minute here some of them were already new coming back from the first suicide squad so it's just called the suicide squad this time isn't it this is what they're called the yes title just movie? the, suicide, the squad. suicide squad not a suicide squad or no, suicide, just squad suicide number squad. one just the yeah. suicide squad or suicide squad two or yeah exactly. suicide squad electric boogaloo <laughs> or whatever it's going to be called ocean suicide squad i don't yeah. know so, Ocean's 27. <laughs> so I'll run through the list for you. So we've got uh, David Dust Melchian. Yeah, he's, he's the one from Ant Man. Uh, that's things, right. Yeah. He is too. I wasn't sure how you said his, no, his no, name. No, no. Oh, see, yeah, you have your own problems with ones. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's, it's people who I don't know, you see. Or like I know them, but I've never heard I, their names as soon, spoken. As soon as I said that, I was like, I'll just spit out the one that I always have problems. And then immediately I just went, bah. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> if it was on this list, I'd get it. Get you to read it, just for everyone listening. Ed uh, four. Yeah, that's its last name. Uh, oh gosh, now I've forgotten the first name. All right, I'll, I'll read out these. Yeah, and I'll you let you come back <laughs> come to you. Back. We've also got John Cena, Jai Courtney returning, uh, Joaquin Cosio, uh, Joel Kinnaman, Mailing Kinnaman's back. Okay, Mailing Ing, uh, Flula Borg, uh, Sean Gunn. No oh, surprises. No surprise. Yeah, Juan Diego. Boto, sorry, some, these names are like hard to read with the graphic behind it. Um, Storm Reed, Pete Davidson from SNL. Oh, wow. Uh, Taika Waititi. Oh, okay. Alice Braga, Steve Agee, uh, T- Tanashi K- K- Kahesi? Kajesi? <laughs> I've probably just butchered Kelsey that. I Clinton? do apologize. <laughs> yeah. I, do, I do apologize <laughs> for that. You're of fish. Tanashi <laughs> Kajesi, I'll go with that. I'm sorry. Uh, Daniela Mal- Malchua? Malchua? I, I really should have looked these names up first she's, before she's, I'm reading she's, them. She's here in New Zealand right now, I think. Uh, we've also got Peter Capaldi. Oh, Doctor Who. Yeah, the, the Doctor. Uh, Julio Ruiz. Jennifer Holland. Uh, Viola Davis returning. Idris Elba. And Margot Robbie returning as well. 
And there's also been um, two unknowns have been cast in this as well. A guy called Nathan Fillion, <laughs> and also some guy called Michael Rooker. Oh, of course. The... They, they, who are they? I've never heard of these guys, so it would be interesting to see who they play. <laughs> yeah, the two people that would always turn up in a Sean Gunn film, I guess. James Gunn. Oh, Sean Gunn film, James Gunn, thank you. <laughs> yes, if, if you didn't get that last joke, that was oh, just sorry. the joke. Yeah, Sean Gunn, for some weird reason, probably because you remember his name out. Yeah. No, I still haven't got the name. Starts with C. Yeah. You know, put you out of your misery? Yeah. Chiwetel. Chiwetel, that's it. Chiwetel, Edgy 4. four. He's, he's not in the Suicide Squad, no, so no, don't... I just, it's just you reading out Don't names. take that the wrong way. You're taking the piss out of me saying his name. And you're really struggling, <laughs> so I'm all right with that. Yeah, okay. So that's an interesting cast. So they haven't... Other than that, we know, obviously, a handful of them returning. Yep. We know that, obviously, some of them will probably cast some particular character I was mm-hmm. expected, and there's been a lot of speculation, and a lot of them actually did come out early as you were saying yeah the main ones from the previous film have already reconfirmed their characters from yeah. the first movie i think that was that was pretty straightforward that i don't think they were willing to hide that anyway that's because it wasn't going to be a surprise who they're playing but obviously this comes out with a cast list and doesn't say who these people are going yeah. to be playing i mean for you know tyke done obviously the characters like cool could just be a completely wholly animated character yeah. For, you know who knows yeah we, we we just don't know who anybody's playing yet apart from the returning actors mm. but and we, we don't know any details either, but one thing that has come out is that uh, when James Gunn posted that to, I guess, all of his social media accounts, he just, was, I can't remember whether it was a hashtag or he just quoted saying, don't get too attached. Yeah, So I guess right. if I you've got a favourite actor amongst that lineup, Who don't knows? get attached, they could die. Could even be one that's probably what returning. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. No, no. They wouldn't be called the Suicide Squad if someone's going to die. As long as the characters die better than the one character that died in the first one. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't even remember we'll his character name. I don't even know. It's, you know that shows you how oh, was it? It wasn't... Um... Yep. <laughs> yeah, that guy. I thought I knew, but I don't. No. <laughs> I cannot remember. That's, some, how, that's some, how forgettable that Someone's listening to this today. going, it's the blur. Yeah, you know, exactly. It's that guy. Can't you forget that guy? Yeah. That, that guy is forgettable. Yeah, that's that the... guy is forgettable because <laughs> that movie is forgettable. Let's be honest. Mm. You still haven't seen Justice League either, have you? Which no, I have not. Yeah. I've got a copy of it no. now. You can watch it if you want. You can catch up. Do I have to, though? Oh, it's I perfect don't, timing. I don't think it's I, worth it. I, well, see, I mean, is... I wasn't happy with Batman Superman, mm. so. I think it was better than that. Yeah. On that note, yeah, fine enough. All right. Just diverting let's, sideways. Let's go perfect, off. perfect sideways DC division. Uh, three people all come out supporting the idea that there is a Snyder Cut that needs to be seen Jason Momoa mm-hmm. and Kevin Smith. Mm hmm. And the cinematographer on the film itself, Fabian Wagner, who actually said it's a fucking great cut or something like that. He swore the quote. Kevin Smith said it's basically a work print. Like he saw it was unfinished, Yeah, what he saw. And I think the other two both said similar. But obviously a cut exists that had Mm. some missing footage or was not finished before he left the project. So uh, I think it's just an inevitability that Warner Brothers is probably going to bow to pressure at some point and release a work print and some re-release of the film. Uh, the more people keep talking about it, it's ridiculous yeah I, I reckon it'll probably be sort of this generation's version of superman 2 yeah in a way yeah definitely i mean if you have you seen the donna cut of i the, think the i have cut? so I think i have seen the different ones so yes. basically he had to use footage that obviously was not he didn't shoot plus the stuff he shot plus there's just like inserts explaining yeah. stuff and so it'll probably just be that it'll be unused footage and stuff that he shot that wasn't followed through it's not that they're going to get the cast back and shoot more of it. Yeah, that would be just ridiculous. Yeah, I didn't see that happening. You know, it's maybe DC might just throw money at it. Go, yeah, you just need to do this. Where you go? I can't see it. I can't see it happening. To be quite honest, I can see them perhaps letting him recut it. I don't know. Other than that, it'd be very surprising. Uh, other DC news? Yeah, stay with DC. We've got uh, Black Adam with Dwayne Johnson shooting by the end of next year, the end of twenty twenty. I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah, it's been said for years. Let's be honest. Like, was that an eye joke? What? An eye joke, 2020, the vision, you've seen it. No? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Just ignore me, that was terrible. Yeah, it was terrible. I didn't even get it. Now no. I get it, and I'm like, that's terrible. Yeah. All right, we'll <laughs> cut that then. No, I'm going to keep that in. It was great. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, th- I think we, we, I don't know if it was the last episode, we touched on one of the previous episodes that there was a Black Adam Easter egg shot for Shazam. Or at least they reference Black Adam because there's the seven thrones, but only the six characters. Mm. So that'll be interesting to see how that ties in with, I guess, Shazam 2 whenever that 
well, gets I'd announced. Ho- I'd hope that they make another one of those because it, yeah, it was it did well and it mm. was actually legitimately good. I really yeah. It, I, I think Shazam was definitely like Aquaman. It was definitely like uh, DC don't have a good track record with films, but it was definitely a good sleeper film. Yeah, definitely. you know, just nobody expected it to do as well as yeah, it did. I mean, it was the same with Wonder Woman. The same with oh, exactly Wonder, Wonder Woman too. Yeah. Um, so yeah and obviously got the Wonder Woman sequel coming as well next year yep. they haven't really got much of a slate of anything because they're just kind of pushing things letting them be obviously Joker's coming out we'll talk yep. about that a little bit later as well but um, it's kind of its own thing as well so mm. yeah uh, we've also had uh, news of Hayley Atwell uh, from uh, Captain America and Avengers and her own um, Agent Carter TV series as well joining Mission Impossible 7 at this stage of the next two of seven and eight, we no, don't no know I think she's. Be I think it's been mentioned that she's going to join both. Oh, yeah. This news to me because when I read it, it was just she's just in. I, th- I in think one of the next two. I think it was. I think because well, they're shooting them back to back, as yeah. we talked about before, and I think that the discussion of what she she wrote about when she was joining. I don't know if you saw it, but she um she put it up on Instagram, and there was a series of f- f- photos. But when you looked at her Instagram, it made one photo made of bits. There was like a dossier, an IMF dossier with her photo on it. Oh, it was really cool. I hadn't seen that, no. It was really, really cool way of um, announcing it. She, she posted it and so did um, Macquarie. Um, but I think there was a later quote where basically implied she was going to be around for both of the films concerning they're filming them back to back to back. So, uh, yeah, it's yeah. quite a possibility then. So we've got down here, Neil Blomkamp is off Robocop Returns. Like, what is going on with Neil Cop? Blomkamp films I don't know he can't he doesn't seem to be able to win uh, no. anything he just keeps getting these films and then he kind of like in this case he's leaving because it's just taking too long and he's not happy with the outcome it's really hard to, uh, to to know what will happen he's hopeful that obviously someone else will pick it up um, it's based off this original sequel script that didn't mm-hmm. get produced that was written by the same writers who wrote the original and had the same kind of sensibilities that they wanted from the as a sequel to, that Verhoeven might yep. have directed or someone would have taken over and obviously it didn't become the actual sequels and then because they tried to turn into Robocop into a big kid friendly fest yeah. the, the following sequel after that became very uh, almost PG rather than an R rated film which is so ridiculous when you see not just the actual cut of Robocop but the extremely unsensitive the director's cut, director's cut yeah. yeah so much worse but so good it is really good um so uh hopefully the, the sensibilities play out and someone actually comes to the party and so it's a shame I think his sensibilities had the right idea but obviously yeah. people's opinion about his films vary obviously District 9 really good uh everything else maybe not so much yeah. <laughs> and yeah, of course obviously the deal with aliens that he yeah I was gonna well. mention that as well I was like you know there was a long time where he had you know the concept drawings for aliens and being a an actual sequel to alien aliens sorry mm. and you know everyone's like oh this would look amazing and then and he got it's Sigourney just, Weaver and Michael yeah. Bean to say yeah I'd be keen and then it's just stuck in development how well it was kind of to be. Ridley Scott's choice because he, yeah. he got to push forward with his um Prometheus, Prometheus and then uh, Covenant, the Covenant, yeah. Um, which is kind of ironically the same thing. To be fair, I can't blame him either because it happened to him and James Cameron because they had an idea about doing yep. an Alien sequel in the studio, so they wanted to do Aliens vs Predator instead. Yeah, great idea that was. So yeah, who knows? We'll, we'll see where these go. I mean, the, the Aliens thing might still happen eventually. Now that Disney owns Fox, they may or may not. The, people have got this worry about Disney owning all the Fox properties. Whether they're actually going to even bother making the more darker rated films because yeah. they're not giving any idea right now they're, they're not disney um, fr- friendly friendly sort yeah. of thing yeah this the stuff that was more disney friendly or at least could be possibly disney friendly is getting potential sequels or reboots like home alone and all that sort yeah. of stuff which they mentioned which we didn't talk about earlier was kind of around the d23 stuff but um it's not officially confirmed but kind of along those lines um i don't think it's officially confirmed anyway but obviously stuff like die hard and alien maybe not so much yeah yeah i, I can't exactly see a guy in a xenomorph suit walking around disneyland anytime soon <laughs> someone in a power loader yeah well see now that would probably be more acceptable but probably not a xenomorph or something yeah well they would have to be fighting something like a queen and then because yeah. it would just be weird yeah I've, yeah you've got your point yeah fair cool um we'll go back to tom holland for a second uncharted has lost its fifth director. <laughs> fifth director. Oh my so god! Yeah. Like, what is going on with movies these days? Well, I think What's... it's just forcing this idea of like we have to take the cinematic game and turn it into a movie. And now they've even changed the character. I mean, having Tom Holland is supposed to be like a younger version, which does have a precedence in the mm. games. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, it's kind of um, it's a bit weird, and they can't keep a director down. And I don't know if that means for the script, it could be just production 
hell again. Like, yeah. But Sony's still pushing forward. They've obviously got Holland's Sony Morgan. being Sony. Yeah, kind of weird. Um, yeah, obviously that will stay consistent. You made that really... Did we talk about this? Tom Selleck? Is yes. the idea of Selleck? Yeah, yeah. Well, I still think that's a great idea. Um, Tom, Su- Tom Selleck is just Sel- Scrow back Sully. his magnum moustache. Yeah, and the right, he's the right, right look and age, I think, at this point. Yeah. Sort of. Um, we'll, we'll move on as well. I think we talked last time about uh, Bond 25 was it the release date i think it came out or oh, it was, was a, no a it, 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 it was info it was um oh what's her name it was in a uh, view to a kill oh that's right it was too yeah that's what um, it was yeah grace jones um, yeah she yeah and there was a couple of obviously setbacks on the set and we talked about that a little bit as well but um literally it was kind of like the venom thing um the next a couple, day or a couple two. of days later they announced because yeah. we're constantly referring to it as bond 25 and all of a sudden it's actually been given a title and that title is no time to die yeah so it, it it begs a question like being um i was gonna say pierce Brosnan, but it's not it's daniel craig <laughs> being Close daniel enough. yeah sure <laughs> <laughs> well he was the one previous so um being daniel craig's last bond film it's begs a question is will his iteration of bond die hence being it in the title or I feel Who like knows? It's, it's, that's it's, the thing I felt was really questionable because I was like, now you're setting potential expectations that he will or won't die depending on what your view outlook is. I don't yeah. think he will. But obviously we talked down, yeah, we talked about Christoph Waltz and Blofeld, yeah. which was obviously a big arcing thing. Like, yeah. And obviously he has uh, the, the Jamaica, which is the base thing that they've set some of the other movies. Obviously um, Ian Fleming wrote the books at his home there. And um, yeah, so there's obviously these ties and con- continued story, which obviously the whole Daniel Craig era is all being connected mm. yeah even, even the worst one so you know yeah. uh, uh, but more connected than all the others yeah all the others yeah definitely definitely more connected than all the others so i guess it'll just continue that that frame it'd be interesting to see what sort of um, impact the whole franchise is once you look at the whole thing together because mm. that last one was definitely not great no um no i, I don't want to jinx this but because we've talked about it like almost like the last three or maybe four episodes <laughs> The Matrix is back on again. Matrix 4 is well, back on again. We, we, we only talked about the last one. So we talked about... We had one episode where we talked about the idea of it because we just watched the Matrix sequels. There was the other thing where the the director of John Wick, who was a stunt person for um, Keanu, Keanu Reeves. Reeves, was talking about it as if it was happening, which obviously it was, and he knew, but he let loose lips. Yeah, yeah. And then he backtracked, but obviously he was just doing it to save his face. Um, and then... We, there was another time I think we just talked about this hypothesis, hypothesis of it, what would happen. Um, so, yeah, but it's actually been officially confirmed. Yep. Keanu Reeves and Carrie Anne are also coming back. back. And one of the Wachowskis is coming back, just Lana. It's Lana at the, at the moment. At it the, could be well, could be both. I would say there would just be like a consultancy kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, it's possible, too, yeah. Lily will be or involved. just like a credit or something yeah. as well. Lana's been only, I think, was it the was it the TV series that they were doing that they both developed together? But I think Lana was the only director on it, yeah. from currently. So, um, so it's not it's not it doesn't have its own it does have its own precedence. Maybe just like I don't want to I've done my dash with directing and making yeah. films. I don't need to come back. So it could be just that. But um, and Lana's actually co-writing it with someone else oh, yeah. as well. So it sounds like it's all same full steam ahead. Yeah. Shooting next year. It, um, it's definitely be interesting to see what's going to happen because i mean well it, the two cast know. members of announced have both died yeah in the third. <laughs> both died in, the, in pretty much the last act of the third film so yes. it's like how is this going to happen like do they take um well they digital constructs essentially. yeah they, or is yeah. there is there another they're going to be this, ma- ma- um was it matriculated yeah and or is, have a digital copy of themselves yeah or is it a, a case where like it's a re- like because neo was the fifth of the ones there'll be just another one it just happens to look like him and yeah. every time we hadn't seen this but every time there was a one they always looked the same which belies the fact that i don't think that would be accurate because you'd think the machines would know who to look for every time yeah and, and well, i don't know unless there's some sort of programming where it's you know changes it turns out oh, there's a no, matrix it's... in the matrix and Zion wasn't real and yeah. it was actually just a matrix it's like inception and it's like layers layers of reality and control it, it, it could be i mean you just got to look at the um, died, the architects sure. tv room mm. it's like you just see many other tvs within the tvs so yeah, it's true 
Yeah. You know, who knows? We've, each one of those could be a different I'm, layer of the matrix. I'm sure it'll ask some very interesting questions. Um, I enjoyed the fact <coughs> you brought up the other day that it was a trivia thing on uh, Duke, and they said, uh, "What was the, the how many Matrix films?" That's right. Yes. And, yes. It, and it, I was like, "Well, you." I was like, "I took that as face value." Well, I can't use that question for much much longer. But, you, but then you told me what they actually wrote, which was, it was three, but only one of them was actually <laughs> yeah, good. one of them's in here. But that actually made me quite laugh out loud while i saw that at work it was quite it may, funny it, it may turn to two if this is a good movie who knows mm. years later sequels we'll are uh, very risky we know this yeah especially after almost 20 wow 20 years you yeah, might as well say now uh, yeah Some from the be, first one it'll be more than 20 years and and quite probably by the time it comes out close to 20 years for the sequels mm. uh now we've talked about the chris rock saw film now that has now finished shooting with some minor details come out nothing too much uh, now Chris Rock is a detective with Samuel L. Jackson as his father, who we're guessing could also be, used to be a detective. I, I think or... that would make the most sense. Um, it's a narrative, funnily enough, that they used. I think it was in the Saw video game, where the character you played yeah. it was the son of um, Donald Glover's... Donald Glover? Danny. Danny Glover, thank you. Gosh, I... where am I with names today? Danny Glover's character, who was in the Saw, first yeah, Saw film, his Saw. son who is now also a detective, I think. So they've used this idea in the video game, but not in the movie franchise, I think. Okay. So it could be that. So but it could be completely unrelated. Perhaps. But if, if it's his father, something, I wouldn't be surprised. Otherwise, why would you bring the character and he has to have some sort of connection? Yeah. I mean, it might be a detective. It might just be something to do with the case. But it would be very. It would be much more sensible that he was like someone who looked into the jigsaw killer. Yeah, potentially in the past, and especially if this is still concurrent to the timeline idea, and still trying to keep jigsaw and the other bits all together, which set was set years after the events of the last Saw Seven. Mm. Anyway, yeah, uh, it, it, or it could even just turn out to be a similar to Saw Two situation, where you have um, Donnie Wahlberg's character being the detective, and his son is somehow involved. Oh, and the traps. traps. Yeah, yeah, that's also possible. It could, you know, it could be Chris Rock's the detective looking for Jigsaw, whereas Sam Jackson's part of one of the traps or something, just being the innocent. Yep. Or or it, could, or it could be two stories narratively that was like in the past and present yeah. and the characters. So. Uh, we'll move on to something that could be quite peachy, depending on <laughs> on how you want to look at it. <laughs> You're welcome for that. Oh, um, Paramount want to remake Face Off. And that's where the PG joke come in. Thank yeah. you, but um, I'll see oh, myself out. God. <laughs> I saw it's funny because I read like so many headlines about this, and they all made jokes. They made that joke exactly, but they all made peach jokes. Ah, <laughs> I didn't even see any of those. Like, so I saw just, about three or four. That's worked in nicely. All for me. made jokes along those lines. Like it was ridiculous. I still want to say maybe they should just not remake the movie. Maybe they should just make a fake movie about making Face Off because it seems like such a weird movie to make anyway. Yeah. I was like, that's kind of weird, but it kind of I probably would watch that more than a remake. The, maybe this is the idea, like, because obviously technology has changed that we could get to this point where obviously they can convince that a lot more, especially when you look at, like, your deep fakes. You yeah. Know, like, I think it's going to go down those lines. Yeah. And you it, look at... It, it can... probably will now because, I mean, if you go back to the original, it's just they made Travolta and Cage look like each other just with like a bit of makeup and doing the hair and stuff. Mm, but yeah. these days you and probably will go... Like that yeah, the these days you probably will go more of a deep fake CG. Sort of well, I was going to say, yes. Gemini Man as well with like yeah. the Will Smith and playing against himself as a young version of himself. Like, there's the CG potential for this. I could kind of see why they would have... If someone's got a hook, that's kind of the right reason to do yeah. it. Um, but then it's like, can, does anyone really want to go up against Nick Cage in, in, in the crazy stakes? Like, yeah. like, he was incredible in that movie. It's insane that how that movie is. Like, well, he, Or you could turn around and go, does anyone want to go against John Travolta in the crazy well, stakes? Well, that was the thing, because the story, the story goes that um, Travolta didn't know where the movie was going to lie. He read the script and he knew what the movie was going to be, but he didn't know where they were going to take it. Until yeah. They shot the opening scene with um, Cage first. Yeah. And he saw that he's like, I need to see what he was shot so far. He was the one that shot first. So Travolta watched that and goes, oh, so this is where we're going. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> like he didn't know where it was going to be until he saw what Cage did in that scene. And then he's like, right, I know where the character's going to be and I know working with him what we're going to work on. So because he worked with him afterwards yeah. on where the characters were. Um, so that kind of set the precedent as far as it. So it'd be that same thing. So Travolta met when Cage took it. Yeah, which, you know, is, is probably dedication to the craft for both actors as well trying to play each other whereas well, obviously a cg route might be a little bit 
easier and worse, I guess, because essentially you're going to replace the face, but it's still the same actor just being themselves yeah. with a different face, which is a bit more true to the events. Because yeah. obviously, if you had your face replaced, you'd still be you, just pretending to be someone yeah, you'd else. Be, yeah. Um, other than being the actor pretending to be the person that was with the face. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Weird as that is, I know. It, it, it gets confusing when it you is. try to think about yeah, it too way, much. Yeah. Uh, the short of it is, I think it's just a stupid idea, but you know, whatever. Studios are going to studio. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll see what happens and see who's going to be attached to it. And... Yeah, Paramount, good job. Yeah, well, also Paramount <laughs> is talking about doing a sequel because I think it's them to Tomb Raider, which wasn't a massive success. No. Um, the uh, the last film we did okay didn't review very well financially did okay but i don't think it like made massive amount of money no, I, th- I, th- I think it just passed like it's minor well, expectations yeah i think i think so um the more interesting thing though is the they've already signed on the director uh, um has been wheatley wheatley's done a lot of very unusual films mm. he's a very well respected filmmaker these days um his earlier stuff was very kind of almost niche and i saw one of his earlier films called sightseers um, which is very black, uh, very black comedy, and another one which is called Free Fire, which had a very big all star cast, but is also very dark. Um, and he did High Rise with um, Hiddleston, and um, oh god, what's the other one? Is it a history of something? Oh, I can't remember the title, but they're all very unique, very interesting films. So him being attached to like a big franchise property it could be very interesting. It could either go really, really well or really, really, really badly. Bad. Um, but Candace still signed up. She when she signed up for the first movie, I think she was signed to like two or three movies. Yeah, anyway, sounds so, about right. Um, and she was good. She was actually yeah. really good in the movie. The problem with the movie, I don't know if you've seen it, but there's like a few really good scenes in it, and the rest of it's not so good. It's because we saw the premiere together. Oh we, the fuck! <laughs> I forgot that I got free tickets. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You got free tickets to Sylvia Park. So friend you are. Shows wow. how much I've forgotten. I saw that movie more than once at the movies. By the way. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, that would explain it. Fuck all right, I'll, I'll, ta- I'll give you that back. Yeah, then. I ended up seeing that. Uh, was it <laughs> was twi- like maybe two twice? Or three times, I think, wasn't it? I somehow ended up seeing I think I ended up seeing it three times. I paid once. <laughs> Just so people know, I didn't spend money. It's a cheapskate. <laughs> it was a cheapskate. I'm kidding, he's not. Wow. How rude. <laughs> Strike you off my Christmas list. <laughs> said, I've already given it. you something for your yeah. Christmas. So I, can't, yeah. I can't do that. Chris, strike you off my next year's Christmas All right, list. fine. And your birthday too, just <laughs> oh, for that one. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I can't believe I forgot that. That's ridiculous. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. I no, really it's am. It's fine. It's all right. It well, happens. you got free ice creams. Yeah, and for free ice cream, free popcorn. popcorn and free and drinks. drinks. Yeah, Almost you have... anything at a, at a cinema you could yeah, think yeah, of. It was free stuff. I remember that. Like they should okay, have just yeah. given us hot food as well. It would have been great. Yeah. Well, that's what happened with me. It was kind of similar to the uh, E3 thing. It was the same ice creams and drinks and, they, and popcorn was there, but they also gave us like pastries and hot food. Oh, wow. and there was tea and coffee and stuff so anyway this is a massive aside yeah um, so we were digressing wow like we completely forgot about that um but yeah i, I what, what do you think about the idea of the sequel I'm, i might as well turn it back to you well, i mean you, I, I, I remember now that you've seen the movie <laughs> well no i really enjoyed it like the angelina jolie ones to me were like a bit kind of too actiony and they mm. they didn't really stick to the source material in a way whereas i felt this definitely felt more based on the video game especially the like rebooted one that's weird that yeah. I mean yeah but like I, like I only admittedly I only ever played the first Tomb Raider so I don't know any of the others but it's definitely felt more like the video games well, when you say the me. Tomb Raider you mean the, like the original original like 96 oh sorry the, the new, new one that's reboot. come out in the last few oh, years yeah, yeah the reboot. reboot but from what I've seen of it it looks very similar yeah no I do I the same sort of vein that. yeah it's as I was saying there was two I think they felt like there was two or three really good scenes in that movie. That she, like, the bike chase scene, yeah, and then the f- scene when she ended up having to kill the dude when they got to that fight and she ended up drowning him. And she actually was like, there was actual intensity and then pathos to her character having to go through this horrible experience, mm. which is really where they were trying to go with this whole storyline. But the rest of the movie, it, it just gets into a gung ho adventure film and it's a bit weird and never quite yeah, found it's searching its for a lost parent. Never really found its footing, really. No. Um, so Edgar Wright's next film, uh, Last Night in Soho, the first image came out. Yeah, so the main production shoot had actually finished. I think he's still got some action or pickups and yeah. B, B, um, 
unit stuff that's still to be shot but it's actually shot in london um and so the 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 picture is one of the actresses literally looking like she's had a horrible night she's got makeup and it's kind of streaked down her face i've forgotten who the actress is i had it in my mind yesterday and now it's gone um and i was supposed to go look it up and i've forgotten but uh given wright's propensity to be much of a genre invoker like Mm. he kind of makes new interesting stories under the guise of existing kind of inspiration including like driver yeah you know, for baby driver and um other films like that other driving films um and obviously uh, zombie films buddy cop films yeah. and apocalypse films for the other three of the cornetto trilogy um and video games for scott pilgrim which just comes from the source material anyway um it would be very interesting it i think it's be these uh, kind of a thrillery drama set in soho in the past and but it's got two narrative stories it's got like a modern story and a story in the past i think there's two okay if i remember reading the blurb about it right but nothing else has been released just the logo uh the the cast the main cast and this one picture and a little bit about the film so it's very people don't know a lot about it which is very interesting but it's yeah. and i don't even know it's due but probably next year sometime yeah. not too far away they've just finished definitely shooting. one to keep on the on the burner watch list well, especially yeah right it's pedigree it'd be pretty interesting yeah he's definitely got a good background and people will probably go follow him regardless uh now there was early reactions for knives out as well yeah so the toronto international film festival has been on and there's a bunch of reactions for that and there was also the previous uh, that didn't screen at Cannes, i don't think but um some of the other films that have also been screened at, the, the, at tiff as they um shorten it to um have been out knives out is getting stellar like absolutely stellar mm. responses like not i haven't read a single bad review um just praising the cast praising the writing praising the the the, the twists um praising the the, the the structure of doing a whodunit and actually keeping the audience guessing is really hard and people were so savvy i think to kind of trying to work things out early but the fact that the movie keeps changing and shape-shifting and is like a chameleon people really uh, seem to be grasping at the critics anyway and people have seen it um and for johnson rain johnson brian johnson so I keep saying Ryan Johnson. Ryan Johnson, um, coming off the criticism that he got through um, Star Wars, yeah, um, it's probably a nice feeling to have people saying this across the board. Saying good things. Good he's things. sort of gone back to what he's more known for, yeah, in I, a way. People have definitely been comparing this, not directly, but saying in that stylistic thing of brick that he yeah. had, you know, the idea of like having something a very unique vision about something that already exists, but putting his own stamp or twist on it. And that's definitely what it seems to be coming across. Yeah. Um, I, I think for most of the people have been like it's one of those films that you don't want to spoil because there's so many changes mm. the one thing they did say is obviously Daniel Craig plays a, a, a southern fried detective he's got a very southern accent almost yeah. cartoonish like but the idea is that he could almost be like a poro like you have a different yeah. not a sequel directly to this film but you have another mystery where he's the detective in the mystery and he would be another story and you could do essentially a sequel and um johnson said he's enjoyed working with him so well that he possibly could consider consider definitely doing it which is really cool already to be hearing that sort of stuff and considering the positive reaction to it if it does as well in the box office because of that reaction everyone loves it that'll probably happen i mean if if um what's his name um kenneth brander can do a uh, poro agatha christie kind of couple of those movies and they were okay <laughs> yeah um then if you're getting massive reactions with this i'm sure that the studio is not going to say no, They're no going to turn. if you've got an idea for another one do it for sure so i'm looking forward to that uh, speaking of other early reactions there's also uh early reactions for the joker film the joaquin phoenix joker film so there was the final trailer that came out and obviously mm-hmm. everyone was like wow this looks crazy yeah. but then the reactions came out um, of cars i think it was cars and <clears throat> Um, and then again the Toronto International Film Festival yeah, and it won the Golden Lion Award yes. as well so, yeah, so uh, already ma- it's winning awards, awards a massive <laughs> response um, p- people were saying it's going to be very diverse to the public I think like just because of the content you're either going to be on board or not mm. um, but if you you know it's definitely uni- unique in the sense of what it is for comic book movies but it's also kind of derivative if you're like a fan of Scorsese films you know especially uh taxi driver and king of comedy yeah. and also de niro's in it and we've talked about this before so it's very interesting to see all the comments but obviously it's people who are kind of vaguely interested it's kind of gone up their list i think and you know if you're you know and people are lauding uh Joaquin phoenix's acting in it as like the best of his career which considering the other peaks of his career is damn impressive because he's got some pretty impressive movies already on his resume so um i'm really keen i know it's going to be really different and obviously has a very interesting take on mythos um and um yeah i'll be keen to see it what about yourself 
yeah i i definitely think it's interesting like there's so many different stories that have come out whether they're gonna change around like the joker's origin or they're gonna change say like um batman or bruce wayne's origin and if you're gonna see you know the the former within this like a bruce wayne or at least even thomas wayne, wayne or yeah, something wayne family, yeah, yeah the wayne family whether you're gonna see them in it it's definitely gonna be interesting i mean we're <clears throat> like you, you kind of see it in the trailer where he's talking to robert de niro's character he's like can you introduce me as the jo- as joker not yeah. the joker just, just joker. joker yeah so i was like did he just come up with that name on the spot did he read it somewhere like a mrs doubtfire sort of thing where he read it in the newspaper or you know it's, yeah it's where does the name come from yeah and obviously you know, he, sort of he, thing. He, or, or at least in this iteration where does the name come yeah. from and it's obviously he's a literal agent of anarchy but not through his through like the joker say in the dark knight yeah he, where he's it potentially like, got ptsd yeah it's it, completely it, different it becomes more of a, a sense of he becomes a sign for the opening of anarchy and then he yeah. embraces it which looks very interesting as well there's an interesting plan it it, 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 it kind of looks like they're kind of touching on maybe the killing joke story arc but kind of putting their own twist on it yeah obviously the comedian stand up comedian thing and all yeah. that yeah um yeah mm-hmm. i'd be very interested i think it's obviously an inspiration it's obviously not direct but there's yeah. obviously bits of it that are an, an element of inspiration it's it's definitely on my list to see it's mm-hmm. very soon absolutely it's I, I definitely want to go see it as well uh, so we'll move on to the trailer list now because it's what we've got next on our list <laughs> we've got black christmas yeah, so no, I don't think I saw this trailer. You did see this trailer. Did I? Did you not watch it? We both, myself and someone else, linked this to you because it was shot in Dunedin. That's right, I did. Sorry. Did you watch this? I've forgotten what it was called. Yes. So that was called I Black do Christmas. know this now. So I didn't even know. Well, that didn't tell us that particular actors that we didn't even know were in the country were in the country. Mm. But uh, obviously the first shot in the trailer is a very familiar looking building to people who live in Dunedin, especially particularly students. Yeah. It's the Otago University with snow, yeah, clock which tower. happens quite often in the winter, but it depends on when this was filmed. I would imagine they the summer. They faked it. Yeah. yeah. And then they probably just use potato flakes like they normally do I for don't snow. Know, but it was very interesting. It, this, it plays like it was like Hawthorne or Hawthbone or something. Yeah, college. something like that. Hawthorne or Hawthbone, yeah. Yeah, I've forgotten. And, uh, and obviously, yeah, it's very, uh, very Americanized because it's supposed to be American yeah. college, but like with... Yeah, it's very unusual seeing like something I know is definitely not in America, <laughs> um, but with an American cast and like just like frat parties with like this hangs some American flags. And, yeah, but it's still obviously shot in, in Dunedin. Like the the buildings with all the lights and stuff on it were obviously like it was like oh that's very New Zealand esque looking buildings. They don't look like ones I expect in the United States. I don't know what else to think about the trailer. It actually gives away. I don't know if you've ever seen the original no. movie, but it gives away the twist that the members of the university are involved in this cult because mm. it obviously shows you this yeah. and i'm like why would you put that in the trailer <laughs> like yeah. it's really weird yeah it, it's it's from what i got i, I kind of got vibes of um hot fuzz from it like, like with the with the, the greater community good. and the greater good yeah. the greater good <laughs> being, being involved in like you know just being this weird cult but yeah i don't know it, it'll probably be one i'll probably go out and see but it'll probably be limited release, I'd imagine. I don't know what I'll hear here, but it's a Blumhouse film, so I mean, obviously, it's got a big production thing. And in New Zealand, obviously, they're going to sell out the angle that it was shot here, so possibly it'll get a release here that'd be slightly bigger than it would have otherwise um, if it wasn't for the for the case. Who knows? We'll find out soon when it comes out. Yeah. Uh, you've also got here the Aeronauts trailer. Yeah, did you did you see this at all? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. So it's, it's loosely based on a true story. Um, it's about um, the history of, Essentially, uh, they were uh, it's Eddie Redmayne and um, Felicity Jones. Um, did, one of them is like a weird balloon expert. This Felicity Jones character likes likes the idea of balloons, and Eddie Redmayne plays this scientist who wants to look into whether it's set in like the eighteenth um, century. Yeah. And uh, it's based on a true story, but in the true story, it was two males. So they've tried to turn it into like a um, dynamic between a male and female, maybe a love a interest relationship, kind of thing, yeah. relationship um, which was, has caught a lot of controversy online that basically the, 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 the decrediting some, a, a very well-known British scientist yeah. who went on to have you know an actual successful career to, to turn into a woman for the purposes of marketing and stuff. And especially these two um, who've acted together as well in the past. Yeah. So, um, but the trailer itself looks really interesting. Um, and they've obviously been able to take actual elements of like the balloon when the actual events went too high and iced over and they almost died. It was through 
luck that they kind of managed to get uh, lose weight to drop very quick rapidly because they didn't know they got up to the i think above the altitude of what plane you know seven boeings you know yeah. fly it now like 37 38 yeah. 40, feet which in a balloon is insane like oh, for sure to be i mean at that it, time period not... felix baumgartner got to what fifty six thousand yes. feet in a, in a balloon like yeah. what 10 years ago yeah but that would yeah. think about the equipment yeah. that he was wearing to oh, do absolutely this. Yeah, he was wearing think about the what they had there. in the time Back period then, yeah it was very minimal as well yeah. and they had no idea what to expect and they got haunting storms <clears> and all this sort of stuff which is shown in the movie so it's interesting i i only saw it because i saw the controversy but it's visually it looked kind of cool so i would kind of like I'm, I'm two arms about this because it's like uh, I hate it when people like when there's no, no reason for historical inaccuracy like just to put a romantic if it's just for the purpose yeah. of putting a romantic yeah, we'll story yeah it as a romantic film or just make something completely original around the idea entirely rather than having one of the characters being historically accurate and one being made up just make mm. two characters up and just make the whole story up and loosely base it on those events that, that, that seems like a much better idea but anyway, I digress. Um, it'd be it'd be interesting. I don't think I'm going to see the movies, but it might be good. I'll see what the movies. Yeah, we'll see what happens with it. No, there was some controversy around Lucy in the Sky trailer with it in, in a diaper. Speak, speaking of true life stories, okay. So you must know about the story. This is by Lucy in the Sky. Is that you've seen the trailer for this? I'm assuming. I, I this is the Natalie Portman one with the. Did you see this? I don't think so. Anne and I were talking about this. So it's possible. Yeah. Um. So it's. The story is that there's uh, a, 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 this woman who becomes an, an astronaut. She goes to space. She really enjoys the experience of space, sees the difference between being out there and being stuck on Earth. It's very boring. And she trains. And she somehow gets this obsession about going back, but at the same time she gets involved in an affair. Like she's in a marriage and she's in an affair with uh, another, uh, like a colonel. And there's, but there's like a weird okay. love triangle. And then she... It, turns into like a bit of a thriller and the movie like if you didn't know the story would look like that sort of poised thriller kind of thing with like a either she's actually crazy or everyone's yeah. trying to say she's crazy but the actual truth was based on a story that happened in 2007 or 2008 and you probably did hear about this because it was all over the internet which was this, there was this crazy woman who um she was crazy because there was no better way to say that drove from houston to uh florida to uh, orlando uh, in one go because of this relationship she was a NASA astronaut that's right I and she wore now. a diaper the that's whole because she didn't right. have so she didn't yeah. have to stop and the because of the story beats have been changed because I think the person in the in real life wasn't was, there was a one person was from NASA one person was like a military um, the other woman was a military she went to go kidnap or attack or kill this yeah. other woman she was a military candidate or a military officer um, and the other person was, I'm, I can't remember if it was, it was a military commander or a NASA commander. But to streamline the story, they've made them both NASA women yeah. and the guy's a commander at NASA just so that there's like a rivalry thing yeah, going no, on. Right. So, of course, he doesn't need to drive all the way from one... Like, they could still have, yeah. I guess, from Houston, the NASA base in Houston to, to um, Florida. C- Cape Canaveral or something. Yeah. But they've dropped it. And so, but everyone's like, that's like the weirdest... The, that's the bit that hooked everyone about the story was that this woman wore NASA grade adult diapers yeah cross country cross country like she literally used the stuff that they would possibly use on the in space yeah for sure. and that's the hook and yeah and so there's all these critics who started the movies going oh it was okay but the bit that we all expected was not even mentioned at all and of course all the, the people that made the movie were being bombarded with questions so that's why i kind of like controversy and, and air quotes yeah. you know like it's it's not really a controversy unless you knew the story and yeah. then once you realize oh yeah it's a pretty big deal of the original story like, that's, that's what the whole story was stuff. about yeah yeah that's what caught, caught everyone's interest <clears throat> about the story is that this woman drove across the united states wearing a nasa gray diaper <laughs> So yeah, it's very interesting. The film's been getting not great reviews. It's a shame, and Natalie Portman looks great, and it looks okay, like as a film. But the fact that it's getting not great reviews, but I want to know if the reviews are linked to this type of thing or not. I still can't stop it's, laughing it's quite at possible, it. Possible, yeah, it, it, it's possible that the reviews are tied into that. Go, ah, oh, the story we all knew isn't here. So yeah, it's what, not as good, market, and the rest of yeah. it's very generic. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens and yeah. see how big of a release that gets. Yes, definitely. but it's, it'll probably be a, a rental on Netflix yeah, or something or Netflix or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah whatever. You, you rental. Sorry, so, yeah, I say rental. You can't even do that. I know that was yeah. a slip of the tongue. Um, the lamenting the rem- rent. Yeah, the miser rentals. Yeah, good old Friday nights with your mates. Mm. 
Uh, we'll move on to Terminator Dark Fate, released on Judgment Day. Yeah, it was a trailer. For, yeah, on Judgment yeah. Day. Or well, whereabouts. I think it might have been a day late. I think. I think people pointed this out. There was actually, it was especially August 29th, and it was out on August the 30th. 30th. And not yeah. here in, in New Zealand, like in the in the, in the states, it was out a day late. Right. Um, but it was the idea. I think was supposed to be released on that on that day. Um, the trailer looks interesting because they've shown has to show a little bit more and um, uh, and obviously there's a bit more Arnie in it and there's yep. a bit more action and there's a bit more story. It obviously seems like I think it's pretty obvious now something definitely has happened to John Connor, but he's not important to the future. Like they've delayed Judgment Day, but it's put someone else in the place of John Connor, which is the girl. Yeah, and. Um, I'm getting the vibes. I don't know if it's true, but I, based on the trailer, I'm getting the vibes that the old Terminator we see was one, another one that was sent back and actually killed John Connor. And that's why she wants to kill it. That would make sense. Yeah, yeah I, think, I, I can see. I think why. that's I think that's part of it. And then why she makes the quip and it's after this, like, you do know I'm going to kill you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would, that would make a I, lot of sense. I, think, I, mean, I, I, hope, I hope that doesn't spoil it for anyone, but no. I, just, I just get that feeling. Yeah, it just well, seems like a really... We do know, and we did mention this in one of our previous episodes, that Eddie Furlong is back in it, but we just don't know yet what capacity. Has to, yeah. he, he hasn't been... Is this the second trailer for it? Yes, yeah, the second Yeah, trailer. so he's not in either of the two trailers. So it's a question of whether... They're hiding they've, a surprise. Yeah, they're hiding a surprise for him. Hopefully it's not like the last one where he's a Terminator himself. Don't even get me started. <laughs> Hopefully it's not that. But, you know, it could just be, say, oh, we've got Edward Furlong back and it's just like a, I don't know, like a poster. I don't know, a poster, like a picture at a funeral or something. I, or, I don't think it's going to be that. Or they, they probably may have just got him in for something specific, yeah. like an actual death scene or something, but... We'll we'll, we'll, soon we'll, we'll find out, but I just get the feeling just putting those pieces together in that in that footage. It's what it feels like to me, and I don't I don't know. I could be completely off base, but if I'm not, I won't be surprised. Like I just just why you've got to explain why there's an old Terminator and the same justification of why there was an old Terminator and the previous one made sense. It was sent back and then it's existed for a number of years. Like yeah, it's, it's sort of just shut down for twenty or so years, and the skin and hair has just aged Age, itself because it's still human actual human tissue over the top. Yeah, so but we'll see. I mean, what did you feel about the trailer itself? Like, does it get you more enthused about the movie? I think it's a hard. We talked about this last yeah, time. Yeah, it's, it's a definitely sell. a hard sell, just because, you know, once again, we keep talking about stuff, movies that play the cards too close to the chest, like not wanting to give anything away. Well, you know, and we and, talked about this last time that Terminators had a really bad track record of exactly. not doing that as yeah. well. So maybe they're trying to learn from this, but it's like it's a hard sell to get people excited without spoiling but then you kind of have to spoil something to get them ex- ex- exactly yeah it's a, it's a catch 22 and you can't you know you can't win regardless i'm but, i'm hoping it doesn't flop as much as the last one i'm hoping people no. go well, hopefully you know, oh you know yeah linda hamilton's back awesome and you know the action sequences are good but who yeah knows? it I won't mean, be until the earlier i mean it's out. it's directed by tim miller who did deadpool and deadpool 2 and james cameron's the producer and a, we have and to stretch the producer, producer not and directing. He, he, he didn't write but he came up with us but he was one of the people that came up with the story idea as well yeah so you know with tim miller's track record and with james cameron producing but probably still not really having his hands well, he, on it as such we definitely know he there was another news story he didn't visit the set once yeah because he was too busy with the avatar so he didn't visit <laughs> yeah so you know it, it's definitely something to look forward to but just with could be, terminators could be, yeah. track record you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't want to um put too much weight in it you don't know what no you're get. <laughs> no absolutely there, there was also a new jojo rabbit trailer uh, taika waititi's new film yeah so it was a proper trailer um the reviews there's also been early reactions coming in out of um tiff um toronto um which have been good positive to mix but mostly more positive yeah like even the mixed ones are a little more positive the humor seems to get it through but if you took away the humor it'd be a very simple story mm. um people seem to like the characterization and feel like there's definitely some good acting and some good laughs in there but also it depends on your sensibilities and whether or not you find Tyker's sense of humor endearing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I definitely think it'll probably, well, I don't know, it may appeal more to a New Zealand audience. Maybe. Maybe Who because knows? of that sense of humor, but... Or it, maybe it, it won't. Yes. It could just be, you know, another one of those sleeper movies where everybody finds it funny. There was, there was an, a local article where one of the reporters locally went and was talking to um, the cast, and including Scarlett Johansson, and they happened to ask about her understanding of Tyker's sense of humor in the movie and she's like i don't even understand it it's just wacky it's weird to me i don't get it but <laughs> eh, whatever some people enjoy it she just she just doesn't get it but she's still acting in a movie yeah, that she still, still obviously en- enjoyed the script or was enamored by the role enough to join 
the movie, even though she doesn't seem to quite get a sense of humor. No, <laughs> so I mean, take she, that. For something. Yeah, well, she's probably had um, you know conversations with Ruffalo and Hemsworth as well, with being with Tyka and mm. Thor, as well as I suppose in a way being with Tyka in Endgame as well. Yeah, even though they probably never met until the premiere. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, but exactly. yeah, so there's there's probably you know some sort of loose connection there as well but the trailer the, them, the but... trailer the trailer looks are good um you know it's, it's it's i'm still just as keen as i was after seeing that trailer so we'll wait and see how that plays out uh there was the second doctor sleep trailer come out as well the sequel to the shining yeah which it shows more directly this time the actual connections to the shining much yeah. more overtly um yeah very overtly in fact um and it was interesting we talked about this last time about this idea of like having to convince stephen king to connect those two things mm. the book that obviously the sequel book that didn't have any connection whatsoever to the original film yeah and because obviously he didn't really like it but also having the understanding that the audience visually like the kubrick film yeah and putting those two things together and obviously it's worked so um it looks very interesting i visually it's looking very nice as well and i and they did very well they went back to the original bl- blueprints for the shining and um actually recreated the hotel mm, that way which, which is, is amazing impressive. yeah and have aged it but obviously obviously we have to shoot bits that would be de-aged as well i guess um, so they would have shot yeah, it i guess like as a clean and then yeah clean and then shot shot it all dirtied up yeah i'm i'm keen i'm definitely gonna go see it mm. or itself um have yeah you see, have I'll, you seen the shining no i'll probably need to see that ding, first yeah ding <laughs> we need the ding back yeah we need to bring that back no we don't yes we do <laughs> no we don't actually because it takes more time to me to go yeah, oh, i've got to add that in takes, now. yeah it takes more time to edit so we won't i will just do it verbally <laughs> um yeah you should probably watch, yeah, the, shining probably watch the shining and then uh dr sleep the, the problem with that, that is that you've probably you've taken in so much pop culture osmosis of the shining like yeah references, i pretty much know the whole thing yeah you know, the Simpsons episode, yep. um, you know, Ready Player One, you know, yeah. all these things that have shown scenes or references to it, you, you know most of what happens before you even see it, which yeah. is very interesting to see what your thoughts are afterwards. Yeah, there's, there's just so many things. I think it, it's definitely one of those movies where everybody wants to put their fingers on it and just like t- do their own version of it. Mm. Which tells you why it's so important for the filmmakers to kind of have gotten that blessing. They was I wouldn't be able to do the version they wanted to of this film. Yeah, connected to that. No, there was also a Bad Boys for Life trailer, the Bad Boys Three film. Mm. No, it's it's not Michael Bay directed this one, is it? No, no, which would probably be a good thing. Maybe it depends on what your opinion I mean, is of how important Michael Bay was to the franchise. Michael Bay, I mean, I I'm not a massive Bay fan, but Bad Boys, the first one at the very least, worked because of Michael Bay. It wouldn't have existed without Michael Bay. It was his style. He put his own money into it, you know, mm. to finish it properly, you know. Um, and it certified him basically as an action filmmaker and it certified Will Smith as an action movie star. Yeah. So it's, it's understandable. There's definitely a visual parallel if you watch the trailer. So they're trying to keep that style that looks Bay-esque. Yeah. Whether or not it strikes the exact right thing is very hard. Like it's one of those yeah, things, I've, there's, there's heaps of video essays out there which actually show that it's actually really hard to mock Bay's style, mock up Bay's style yeah. properly. It's very much easy to take the piss out of him and his explosions and yeah. the way Especially he shoots Transformers. Stuff. But to actually get it right is actually really hard. He's actually got a really particular style to his vision, and he, the, yeah, the, the fact that the way it. he is on set, as everyone knows, like probably belies to that idea that he has a very unique, singular vision that is not very easy to. It seems like it'd be very easy to mimic, but it's not. Mm-hmm. For sure, it's easy to reference and parody, but not to get exactly right. Yeah, no, it, it's from what I can tell from this, it seems as though they may have been still in the force for what 20 or so years yeah it seems or, like or they've been called back into it but it well, kind of looks like this could be their last hurrah like well, they kind of hanging up the badges what's um martin lawrence's character i forgot i can't remember but he's he's like he's like he's like the um he's, i'm too tired i'm too old for this shit yeah, yeah glover role you know? yeah he's like I'm, I'm one day away from retirement like you know one week away from retirement like it's that kind of almost feeling like i'm almost out and you're probably me and then like one more one last ride you know like one it, it, last... it definitely seems like that for sure it, it looks like was i can't remember whether it was was their children or was it the younger people at the force at the the police academy i think they were police officers yeah the young officers the young officers yeah so it looks like they'll so potentially take street. over the role yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the jump street kids will be taken and then, over and then they reference the song which is weird there's like a meta moment and then they, they tell them off for like 
yeah that's they're like cut it out that's our thing or something yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. interesting trailer i mean it'll be it'll be what i expected it to be bad boys 2 was such a movie that I, I don't know how best to describe it other than it's a movie that just keeps going until it stops yeah it just you think it's going to end and it doesn't and then it keeps going and then it doesn't end and then it keeps going and it doesn't end and then it keeps going and then it just stops it just ends and yeah. you're like oh okay that was the end of the movie <laughs> yeah. it's just non-stop action and it is a pretty crazy movie if it stays to that momentum like it was entertaining for what it was not amazing but entertaining yeah and if it's funny like the, the playoff between the two of them always works so if that continues to be the same the script the two of them working together I'm sure it'll be fine mm. Now, you saw this uh, before you went and saw It Chapter 2, which we'll get to as well, but the Birds of Prey trailer. Yeah, this was an unexpected surprise, and it got the audience. Um, this is kind of along the lines we talked about um, the Tenet trailer that um, Warner Brothers also released for Christopher Nolan's next film, where they only showed like a, it was like a minute long, yeah. 50 second long trailer. It was basically the same thing. It was literally like a little introduction and then like 40 seconds of footage. So it played out with uh, like the red balloons and the It music that was playing so everyone just assumed it was the movie starting yep. and then the balloons kept going and the logos came through and then it became a there was a dc logo and i could hear people in the audience going huh like are they what what does dc have to do with this like it was like you could tell that it was people that obviously were aware enough to go why is there a dc comics logo on this and then there's a silhouette at first you think it's pennywise walking forwards and then yep. you realize no they've got carrying something and it ends up being harley quinn and she's like, I've had it with these fucking clowns. <laughs> well, the, the fucking is censored by a balloon pop. She hits with the yeah. bat. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was a nice little surprise. And there's a very quick montage of a bunch of stuff from the movie. And then the title appears, which is absurdly ridiculous as a title. Like it's Birds of Prey and the Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. It's a, it's a reference to um, uh, Birdman. Yeah. <laughs> It's just freaking weird. It's so weird. Um, but obviously it also implies this clowns thing and Joker and Jared Leto not being in it and like she's emancipated herself away from this relationship and yeah, weird. Yeah, but it looks all right. It could be It could be like all these, what we were talking about before with like um, you know Aquaman and um, Wonder Woman and um, uh, Shazam, like it, because it's more standalone now. Um, who knows but obviously it also has to connect somehow to the Suicide Squad I guess yeah because well I assume so she's still playing the same version but we don't know it's, we'll it was an interesting happens. teaser and it was only attached you were only ever going to see it. I mean it got leaked online anyway but officially you were only ever going to see it if you watched it chapter 2 yeah. which is weird I mean it makes sense contextually because it has a reference to it but they could have released that online like yeah. it still would have made it would have been I'm fun. surprised it still hasn't I mean just, and if, and uh, unofficially it hasn't they've not but unofficially yeah. you can find it it's not I sent you a link yeah. to it and um, it, you can look you just look for it and you can find it it's not hard somehow it got online um, pretty quickly it was I didn't realise it, it didn't even exist I obviously was surprised when I went and saw the movie because I saw it pretty early on like yeah. when, like saw it the preview night the night before but um, yeah definitely definitely worth checking out you you probably can easily find it just by searching that birds of prey it trailer or something yeah. it'll come up there's All plenty right. of copies of it we'll check it out right so we've got trailers out the way should we move on to the reviews and yes. stuff i think looking at our list i think sadly i've only seen one thing here so this is going to be a review for you <laughs> i mean review fest. We, we might well, we'll start with apollo 11 because it's the only one i've seen do you want to start with it or do you want to leave it to last you go on, we'll leave it to last. Leave it All to right. last so crack us off with The Art of Self-Defense. Okay, so The Art of Self-Defense is, um, well, I was not what, not what I was expecting, but it was awesome. Um, kind of a really weird, bleak comedy. Um, it's uh, Jesse Eisenberg and Imogen Poots. Eisenberg plays like this kind of emasculated, nibbish man, which he's sometimes really good at playing. <laughs> Um, who's, it's just himself yeah, I don't think it is I think no. he wouldn't be an actor he was but he's so good at it um, who's like an accountant in this firm and uh, he has a little dog and he's very uh, he, the, the opening scene is. I'm just going to bring this just to point out the opening scene he's he's obsessed with France but you don't know this at first and he's sitting there reading the newspaper and these two he's in like this little shitty cafe and these two French tourists come in and they order coffee and they have to like pour it themselves and they're like complaining about the coffee and he's obviously we don't know this but he's understanding everything most of what they're saying and then they sit there and they have this little game between themselves where they look at him and they're trying to make a story about him and they make all these derogatory comments yeah and then it cuts to him in the car and he's listening to french tapes and repeating stuff back in really fluent french and you're yeah. like oh crap he, he realized you realized he understood everything they said about him but they were making some really horrible comments yeah. about him 
And so, but he didn't say anything. He, he didn't speak out. He didn't say anything. He let them just say whatever they wanted. Yeah. And it sets up exactly what his character is. Anyway, so one night he goes, gets home from work and he's got, he realizes he hasn't got food for his dog. So he goes out in the middle of the night and goes to the supermarket, buys some pet food and on his way back gets attacked by these gang, this gang of motorcycle hoods. Mm-hmm. And um, they beat the crap out of him, almost kill him. And he ends up in hospital. And then under that, he f- just about a happenstance walking around one day, he takes some time off work. Um, he's, his boss tells him he should take as much time he's got heaps to leave yeah. he sees this karate school and he ends up joining and on the surface it seems really straightforward but the, the more it delves in the weirder it gets and it's okay. it was really I re, at first I was like where's this going to go I'm not sure but oh my god really funny really clever just very very much I, I don't want to like p- point to other movies and go it's like it's not like anything but the character types are very um, awkward and kind of st- Stat, you know, there's got this weird kind of static way that they talk and think and act and stuff. But all the characters are like that. So like, not just him. You start realizing that all the actors are playing a particular type of character, and it it's really good. I do recommend it. So okay, it came right. out of the film festival here, and it's getting. I think it's actually getting a minor release as well at some point. So all right, one to check out. Uh, you've got uh, what else? Yesterday. Yesterday. Yesterday yes. is Danny Boyle's um, take where uh, there's like this weird power outage, and this guy gets at the same time that it happened. This guy gets hit by a bus. He's a musician, and when he wakes up out of his coma, he's missing some teeth from the bus accident, and um, eventually it dawns on him that people can't remember the Beatles. Yeah. It turns out there's other he's, things. He's the only one that remembers. He's the only one. Well, it turns out he's not the only one who remembers. There's some other people as the movie goes on. But other, there's other things that things have disappeared. And there's kind of little punchline jokes every once in a while because he'll make a reference to something and yeah. people are like, what's that? Or they think of something else that's got that name or something. So like when he's making references to the Beatles, they just think about the insect. Like, yeah. And they're like, well, of what course. does that have to do with music or something like that? And so he uses this idea because he's a struggling musician to basically try and remember as many of the Beatles songs as he can and launch them as his own. And yep. then he manages to be really successful doing so. Um, it's it's a great concept. It's a real, there's some great sense of humour to it all, but it's not quite executed perfectly. Yeah. Um, not Boyle's best film, but at least entertaining enough to for a couple of hours to sit down and have a good laugh and... Um, you know, it's, it's emotional too it's like a good romance story underneath it as well and like um, Ed Sheeran plays a version of himself and he's actually really good in it so yeah. all the people that really hated seeing him in Game of Thrones can probably <laughs> feel a little bit better um, yeah he plays a version of himself there's a great scene I think the best scene is actually has him in it um, he come, he gets in contact with him he, see, he sees him or he's no sees him on a TV show and likes this song that he sings and um uh, he contacts he finds out his home number which is he lives at home with his parents and his he comes around to his house and his dad just comes into the kitchen wandering in to grab a midnight snack and they're standing in the kitchen and he's like oh you look like that musician guy uh, Ed something or other yep. Sharon or that he's like yeah I am Ed Sharon and he's like yeah, <laughs> yeah whatever and like <laughs> he, he sort of blows off. it off he's yeah like, he yeah. blows it off or something like that and they end up having this really awkward conversation about he, and he says he's pulling something out of the fridge and he's talking to him like it's like about pickles or something it's yeah. real weird but it, it's like the funniest bit in the movie yeah. like, I, I remember seeing the trailer for this sorry just to digress a little I remember seeing the trailer for this and I was like oh, it actually looks pretty good like the, the vibe I sort of got off it was a music I won't say a musical version because it implies there's singing and dancing but mm. a, a similar sort of story to Ricky Gervais's The Invention of Lying mm, yes. same sort of thing happens where you know Ricky Gervais invents lying to sort of better himself whereas this guy is taking advantage of knowing all the Beatles songs to yeah. sort of better himself yeah and the, and that's 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 the thing you could always say that is in some ways a slightly derivative as an idea but it still belies the idea that it's really good there's a really great idea about people there, there was other things where like and there's other as I said there's other jokes where he comes to the realisation that things don't exist Oasis is another thing that doesn't exist in this <laughs> in this world um and uh, what's there's some other things there's, there's some other examples um, and there's a big payoff joke at the end with something else as well um but uh yeah it's kind of yeah it's, it's just not quite there i think i feel like you know if okay. you say maybe it was just a few drafts too early cast great humor lands 
the idea is great. It's just, just something not quite perfect. Um, and I think it's been reflected as well in the reviews. Everyone's kind of said the same thing. There is one other thing that I won't talk about because it's a spoiler, but it's potentially slight. It was slight. I could understand why people might be quite controversial about it. Um, but it has to do with the Beatles, obviously. Yeah. And to say it more would to, to be to ruin a surprise in the movie. But, um, but a very interesting take anyway. Yeah. Okay. Um, once upon a time in Hollywood. Um, Tarantino. Um, if you're, f- I, I've been saying everyone because people go ask me, have you seen it? Yeah, I've seen it. Um, if you're a fan of Tarantino, you're gonna enjoy it. I don't see why you wouldn't. It's it's, it's Tarantino. It's Tarantino. Th- you'll go watch it anyway. Yeah, exactly. You go see it, and it's, it's Tarantino through and through. You, you, and in some ways, that belies the idea that you know the third act's gonna devolve into chaos. Um, and as you always. know it's gonna be exactly as always, and it's gonna turn into an alternative history of considering it's a history set, you know, period piece. Um, he knows the aesthetic well. Um, the actors are perfectly cast. The humor when it's mm. there lands solidly. Like the, the, especially in the third act, when a few things that have been set up kind of come together. There's one thing I honestly got the best amount of laughs in the theater, just yeah. because the payoff to set up would happen way near the start of the movie, and wasn't ever re- really referenced ever again. Just comes back. Um, uh, but the same thing is it's a bit too long. Like I've been saying this as well. I think ever since his earlier editor who worked with him on everything through until their death, yeah. when she died, none of the editors that have come in to replace her have kind of been able to have the same rapport with Tarantino and say, this is too much, this is too little, yeah. let's change this. They kind of just let him loose and his films are a little bit longer than they, they used get to be. Longer, yeah. And a little bit looser. And so there's a few scenes where I could go, well, you probably could have done that a different way or you kept it only because, like one of the scenes I keep mentioning is the example of how some of the main characters, including like Tate and Polanski are involved, is seen through a set scene with a party at the Playboy Mansion. Yeah. And obviously for Tarantino, that's awesome. He used to shoot at the actual Playboy Mansion and dress it up like it's the you know, some of its height in the 60s. Yeah. Um, you know, having people having a party at the back by the grotto and it looks awesome. But it doesn't really carry much weight in the story. What yeah. information you get could out have of done it. without it, sort of thing. Well, the information is still important, but you could have explained it by having one or two things. Another character explaining it in another scene that would have taken 30, 40 seconds, or in voiceover, which he does employ to explain things like this later on in the movie. It doesn't need the yeah. the, the same situation because in the final act, he has Kurt Russell, who's also in the movie, is another role, doing voiceover, explaining a bit of a setup, kind of time framing what we're watching. Because it's a set, the last bit of the movie is set at a particular time based around some actual historical events and some fictional ones. But he's trying to create a time frame narrative, so he uses his voiceover to explain that. Mm. Right. So he could have done that earlier in the movie because it kind of comes out of nowhere at the point where it does appear. Um, there's also a very infamous scene, which I will mention, which is the one with Bruce Lee, which it's a funny scene and it works well within the context of telling the story. And again, it sets up a lot of character information about one of the characters in the movie. But it's a bit unnecessary, aside from the yeah. fact, obviously, we talked about this last time, that there's this controversy around um, Bruce Lee's daughter saying it wasn't really his personality type, Yeah. Um, which to me definitely rings true having seen it. Um, it's still a funny scene. It just, if it didn't exist in the movie, you wouldn't lose much out of yeah. it. And the little bit of nugget about the character that we are following, you could have again imparted somewhere else. Yeah. So, which it's the whole scene's, I think, like maybe somewhere between 10 and 12 minutes. It's quite a lot. Oh, wow. You know, it's like the, it's a three sequence kind of thing including yeah. the appearance of Zoe Bell is in that scene as well um, and it all lost you you know you would have lost, you would have lost Kurt Russell's character you would have lost um, the, the fight with um, Bruce Lee and you would have lost Zoe Bell but 12 minutes of footage that could have been condensed into maybe a three two three minute scene which would have given you the same information yeah. who knows so again I feel like yeah it, you, you, it's not his best but even though it's worst and if you're a fan, you're going to see it anyway. And yeah. I do recommend it as an entertaining sure. film, even if it is almost three hours long. Yeah. Uh, if, we've, if we've sat through Endgame, we could probably sit through that. Yeah. It doesn't, it, yeah, it definitely feels its length, which is. Yeah. Um, uh, the Kitchen. How was that? Uh, the Kitchen, which I didn't know was based off a comic. Well, it's based off a graphic novel. It's one of the DC mm. Vertigo films. So I didn't know it was based off that at all until the and logo I, came No, out. and I think you asked me this as well, and I sort of didn't vaguely knew what the movie was about, but didn't know I didn't know on. it was based on a comic either. Um, it's It was good and bad. I enjoyed it. It was a bit generic, but only because it's coming off the back of stuff like Widows, and there's another film where you've got women taking over a, a, a male-dominated essentially crime era. they're not the same film this is more oceans. of them oh, oceans <laughs> no well oceans is another one but yeah. it wasn't the one i was thinking of. there was another no. one where it was, it was oceans is another good example though um 
but essentially not because of a trend these these stories work really well actually and the, the way that this is narratively framed is that um there are a bunch of mobsters wives who are looked down by their husbands they're like they're yep. beneath them they're literally there to to, to clean Arm the house candy sort of thing well no, not even just that it. like bring them beer and look after the kids yep. and you know do the, the chores and the men the, go the out typical and, motherly or womanly things yeah and then that they should do of that time and and, and the, the the men go out and do the crimes and yep. they make the money and bring it back and they're part of this mob and um and when all the husbands end up going to jail the women take over and start doing bringing basically their their um fleecing money off um, businesses as protection protection racket yeah and they grow and they actually become more successful than the men were at it but of course then there's other things that coming in play including the fact that the men are going to get out of jail at some point yeah and this is a really good dynamic the movie kind of it meanders a little bit in places and the the cast is pretty solid but there's some questionable decisions um Getting the aesthetic of the 1970s set in late 1970s New York is it feels pretty good. Um, obviously the title comes from Hell's Kitchen, so that's the yep. area that they're in. One of the supporting actors is Donald Gleason, mm-hmm. and he plays probably against any type I've ever seen him in any of the other movies he's ever been in. Um, honestly, the closest I could say is his character in Star Wars, and even yep. then, that's not even close. This guy is he's no. basically a psychopath. No, oh, wow. um, you know he he where he was like a he was doing crimes for the mobs, and he has no qualms about killing people. Like she, she runs down after after a guy, well, he doesn't even really run. He kind of jogs. The guy's sprinting, and he just shoots him in the back, and then casually walks off at one point <laughs> of the movie. And he's he's really, but he's he, for, for the actor himself, is really good role. He's really meaty, and he gets to do some really weird shit. Yeah. So yeah, it was kind of yeah. kind of cool. And so it's a good cast i couldn't highly recommend it um yeah yeah but if it was on sarah on tv it was on netflix as a suggestion pop it on on. it's not bad and mccarthy's continues to prove that she's more than just a comedic actress she's really yet again she's a really serious really good dramatic role in this and she's really good in it as well okay uh how about it chapter two oh how do i unload this this is this is the interesting one this is the one i've been 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 racking my brain over it Chapter 2 is definitely not It Chapter 1. Okay. That's definitely the easiest thing to say. It is not as successful. Um, but part of that isn't the filmmaking. Part of it's probably the source material. Part of it is also the decision that the first movie mostly only focused on the children and probably only covered maybe about a third or just over a third of the book mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. And so a lot of heavy with lifting of this is mostly the adults with a few flashbacks of the kids. Yeah. And it kind of throws some real interesting narrative beats because there's stuff that you didn't see in the first movie that still happened during that same sign and all of a sudden it's, it exists. Like, one of the things is, like, I don't... You correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't remember the kids were smoking as much in the first one. It's obviously a thing that it did exist in the narrative. I don't remember it at all. Yeah, and then all of a sudden they're kind of, like, some of the couple of the kids are smoking, like, Bev's smoking cigarettes and, like, she's stolen right. her dad. And, like, I was like, oh, I don't remember doing that in the first one. Like, it's kind of weird. Um, and they kind of gloss over a few things like the whole Beep Beep Richie thing has become yeah. this weird thing because Pennywise said it in the first movie and now they, when they reference it in the sequel it's like did they get that from Pennywise there's things changed from the book that obviously happened to change they're also very different than the miniseries version yeah. with him Curry the cast is really solid but certain characters kind of don't get as much time, don't, as time and dynamic as perhaps they should um, the standout without a question is Bill Hader he is impeccable in that film yeah. honestly there's no you, everyone who was coming out of the early reviews was saying it and it's true like I was just like I went in going yeah I'm sure it's like it seems like overhype about it but honestly no he gets he gets the best laughs he gets the best empathy he gets the best of everything honestly and it's not just because they've written it that way he just is that actor Yeah. he honestly if there's one serious thing that will come out of a horror movie getting nominated for an Oscar it'll be him for best actor award honestly yeah if that doesn't happen, I'll be shocked because he just runs that gauntlet of everything through that movie oh, and wow. he holds yeah. it together. I, I do know there's a lot of good things coming out about him in that film as well. Yeah, so. yeah it's and it's well deserved. It, it honestly yeah. is. Um, you know, you, when people were going, oh, you've got Jessica Chastain and James McAvoy, James McAvoy, and you expect kind of certain level of acting, and they do, they're fine, but yeah. they don't get to do as much as he does in that movie. And again, it's not from the writing; it's just because of how much heft he manages to put into the scenes that he's in. Yeah, he gets, he gets, yeah, as I said, the biggest laughs and the biggest emotional things, almost to some to some extent. Um, the final act is the movie's long as well, which probably doesn't help. And as I said, it's got to cover more of the book than mm. the first movie did. I think in hindsight, they probably should have shot them together. 
yeah um and done it more like the book and the miniseries which was that it jumps narratively between the adults and the kids back and forth constantly yeah. rather than having a movie entirely focused on the kids. the kids and then one for the adults the little bit of the kids exactly but then the focus might have been that the first movie wasn't going to be what well, didn't end up being as successful because of that and mm. um and as i said the kids are more interesting in some respects they get more of the scares there's one really great little reference which i don't want to spoil but um i'll explain it in the sense in the original book um Stephen King wrote it with the idea that the creature could shapeshift, mm-hmm. essentially become different things. So it becomes things that people feared. So it played on the fact that obviously the book was set where the kids were in the fifties. Yeah. So they would see stuff that they'd see in movies like the Wolf Man yeah. and Swamp Thing and all these things like him. So uh, there's one scene that I've now read was not entirely intentional to go this way, but it makes reference to a 1980s horror movie and it does it really well and it was actually bill hader as well who managed to throw in an extra little reference knowing the, a line that came from this movie i don't know if you know what i'm talking about no it's been in the news a little bit but if you haven't i'm not going to ruin it because it'll be worth seeing and i know you want to see the movie. yeah and i do recommend it i think that's the end of the day especially if you're a big fan of the first one you definitely have to see it and yeah. um, just to bring out the total fo- uh, sort of close it out rather yeah it's worth seeing for that and yeah. as i said there's great stuff in it and there's some great scenes um, it just isn't as it's, it's a good movie just not as great as the first yeah. I think that's basically in a nutshell okay and we'll close out our reviews with one that I've actually seen on this list as I mentioned before of the documentary of Apollo 11 now we both went and saw this on IMAX and wow it was just so I, I can't even put it into words like it was just so good like, I, I really enjoyed it I think the thing that, that strikes me is the, the, the audio that came from the original films plus the score was amazing yeah but also just the amount of footage and how they would have had to sort that against the amount of audio. Because mm. I think I talked about this with you afterwards. It's like, they've got all the comms chatter that obviously was recorded separately. Yeah. That NASA recorded all the com- conversations. And then they've had these camera mice walking around just filming people at random. And the guys in the um, control basis was walking in with like 16 mil film cameras. And they're filming these guys. And someone's had to find that footage. footage and or to, the audio to Or the match. audio to match. The, or it's incredible. And then like, because everyone gets labeled... And the whole scope of it is obviously it's not it's about the mission, but it's really about the scope of the size of the mission and how and what went on and yeah, how many people involved. How many people involved and, and even the point of it is they show the clip, you know, at the end where they thank the everyone who helped them go on that journey. Yeah. Which tells you how important it was to them. Um But you start to realise just like even gives you statistics like the speeds when you get certain yeah. shots, some of the film shots, the technical standpoint that I talked about when you, there's that shot where the the shuttle the, the top is breaking apart from the last yeah. bit of the yeah just as they've gone into into space, space yeah. rather yeah and the there's a shot from a film camera inside it as you see it disappear and then the piece starts to rotate back towards earth and the film runs out but something had to happen that when that separated it literally said right roll the film like pull yeah. the film cord to start the some film. sort of magnet or cord or something yeah like someone actually had to think about this too when they were building this whole thing just to have that shot and I was saying to someone else I didn't say this to you but I thought about it more it's like the, the guys going around just getting they had all these guys working obviously getting camera shots like in the crowds at the things and yeah. the, the fact that people shot all these things that narratively for this documentary helped shape the documentary but they had no I don't think they had any idea why they needed to shoot so there's that shot yeah. of like say the guy with all the camera rigs that's going to point up and you see the shot yeah. I'm doing it someone filmed that thinking that's an interesting shot I don't know what it's ever going to be used for if you anything know, at if all anything it could at just all, you know just rot just away archi- somewhere yeah, cause, yeah cause it could be archived you know and it was but you know like someone actually did that and then but for the structure of this way this documentary works it's perfect because it tells you the scope of the story which is these crowds watching this launch and how yeah, big an like, event however it many miles away yeah. it was out on another beach how important it was and like you know all these things are kind of it's crazy that it, it, yeah it, it just works so well as a narrative like, yeah it's it, it, amazing it, it almost the way it's sort of documented and all this footage is found and put together it's almost as though it's a documentary from like the last 10 15 years and it's just been like um graded to make it look old yeah sort of thing if you get what i mean yeah yeah yeah. But, there's a certain look to it yeah to like, make it look older than yeah it whereas these days people would have more of an idea of 
okay, we need to shoot these sort of things for this documentary. Well, that's what but I mean. Back then, yeah. like, nobody had a clue. Nobody why... made documentaries like that back no, then, exactly. really. Like, they really didn't. So they just shot a bunch of stuff. And, like, the way... But we've put it in a modern narrative structure, yet it seemed to have already been planned out almost that way to begin with, that they know, knew what they needed to shoot in order to do that. It's, But it's clearly, like, the way I, you describing that and me saying that almost does make it... We, we're selling this idea that it sounds faked, you know? like Yeah, in a little bit. It, like the moon landing. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. But it's not. That's the whole thing when you see yeah. the scope of this, this is, this is definitely a reason where you go right if the moon landing was faked you'd have to fake all the stuff we saw in this movie yeah. and it would be absolutely it would be stupidly more expensive than just trying to go to the moon like let's yeah. be honest like when you look at this you're like if they faked all this it's clearly you, yeah you wouldn't you wouldn't do no that. so yeah. I mean, yeah it was just so massive like we, we go back to like the syncing of the audio on the video it's like i reckon that's most of the the time putting it together there mm. like having all the all the audio and having all the footage that'd be a piece of piss to try and put into a narrative but to put the two together well that, that, that's got to be a long time that would be a long time yeah it'd be months and also just and the restoration of the film oh, for sure. just to make sure it looks right which it does it looks amazing and you're right i mean aside from a particular kind of film grain grade look that came from being on that particular film mm. especially the larger format um and obviously people's yeah. like outfit and hairstyling which was of the time obviously if you the quality level of the footage though yeah you could believe it was shot and also it belies that idea that yeah if you did this if you did a moon launch now the way we shoot stuff digitally there'd be cameras everywhere and oh, you'd, be, sure. you'd be able to make this so much easier on yourself you'd yeah. be able to plan out knowing who you had to film and every desk probably all the main mission commanders would have their own little camera that ran oh, all yeah, the time yeah they have like a know. little gopro or something yeah. yeah and it would just be to a drive and it just constantly was recording at all times in case something oh, came sure. up that they needed you know like you would do this the production values essentially would go through the roof but the logistics of it would be yeah. much in some ways a lot easier absolutely and i mean like I think one thing that we both agreed on is that, I think, the, the, the last, what, minute to launch of the rocket as well, where it said you had, like, your one big screen and then you had, what, eight or so smaller screens mm. to the side of it where they just count off, like, what part of the mission control they are and they just say, like, go. as yeah. like they'd go through a checklist and they just pop up. Pop up and every software is so good. Yeah, the way you just really the multiple that. screens and stuff. Yeah, and the other thing that manages to do, which I, which I, I'm, I felt this, and I've had other people say this as well, um, is the idea that you know what this is about, you know what they accomplished, yet it still manages to make it really intense and tense yeah. feeling. Like there's this feeling like, wow, this is massive, and that sound I was explaining as well, just like the sound of that rocket they managed to capture it, but it was still peaking out so much that it starts to go popping, but it's so accurate to what it would probably sound like because it was so bloody loud and, like, yeah in reality yeah even to the people on the beach yeah like, exactly. apparently like, it was <sighs> well, cause, well, i remember like just from like um shuttle launches and other rocket launches that they say that people that are sitting on that beach can hear that granted you know delayed because of the way sound travels but they could hear that almost as clearly as if you know They're you're right, right there, there yeah. you know granted that's, you'll probably be cooked to a crisp if you're right there but well that's the other thing there's that the point. shot of cameras that are on the mounted on the thing it's like how do they survive like how do they they yeah, had to, build. have to be in some sort of hard ass casing yeah like, but they have to be transparent for you to have the lens pointed at the like there's the shot of the the actual fire like coming at the in the base of the rocket yeah. stand and you see it come out and it's in slow motion it's slow the film but it's just like that idea of like something there was a camera in there and what was it built into in order to survive so the film didn't get burnt yeah to get that shot like all these logistics that someone had to think of at the time as part of this Olympus. it's, it's insane. insane it is crazy it's just insane but yeah if you haven't seen it i like guess oh, I, see, I, I seeing it in general yeah. it would be amazing if you can see it in imax wow well, yeah. yeah definitely it's recommend amazing. it. I, I mean, is, I, is it still out it's no it was the now. film festival was like that's right imax film festival was literally six days of it that's and right. it was on the on the actual new zealand international film festival for one screening which wasn't even imax it was just a civic screening yeah. i think so you know yeah unfortunately and they had free solo on again on IMAX that's right and, they did um, too. several other like animal based documentaries as well um so yeah, it was. Yeah. I, I, I definitely think I'll be picking up the DVD. I mean, or Blu-ray. Blu-ray, yeah. If you I, like. I think I will too. It's I mean, good. Yeah, I, I'm I guess, sure there'll be yeah, some other interesting stories about making of it, which I'm hopeful will yeah, be on there. Yeah, be like bonus features, or yeah, or commentary or something. Yeah. So yeah, keep an eye out for that when it comes out. It's definitely very good. Yeah. I'd recommend it to any space nuts out there. Mm, definitely. Right, we're coming to the end of this episode. A slightly shorter one from our last one, so. 
So slightly, hopefully. Yeah, I'm slightly. Um, so we better get on to our films, but badly that I'm badly losing it. Yeah, you did. Don't know you badly. I think it was the last. It was so, the last episode of Draw. I can't even remember. So now. Neither can I. Well, yeah, it was because I, I gave you long. a care. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Three rounds. I'll shake my bag. Badly, badly explained films. We'll see how this goes. Let's see, do I want that one? I can't. I, once again, right, we can't tell what these are, and Robbie can verify for me that I'm not actually looking. I'm just being no, he's, <laughs> smart he's ass not. saying that I don't want that one. Yeah. Oh, he it's pulls a, on out, and if, we, if it's one that he doesn't think he knows or I don't know, then he won't. Uh, hopefully, you can play along. But sometimes we get them way too fast. I've realised this is what I, don't know, like, I kind of have to. We have to because we yell them out straight away. But if we get them straight away. <laughs> And there's people at home, yeah. they don't get a chance to listen to it. So I don't know if people need to pause it immediately after they hear it. Okay. This is about a guy who loves a scent at a particular time of day. A scent? Yeah, I'll go with a scent at a time of day. A scent at a time of day. Jesus. I just hope I've got this right. <laughs> we'll find out once we find out. If I can't guess it, I'm just trying to think. Uh, scent at a particular time of day. Wow, you may have stumped me on this one. 10 seconds. Yeah. Time of day, time of day, time of day. Two, one, time. Nah, no idea. Someone at home got it? <laughs> yes. If, if you've got it, I guess well done. Hopefully I've got it right as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not cross. Let's see. What is it? Uh, so I've got Apocalypse Now. Oh, and, that's, and it's, uh, I love napalm. the smell of napalm oh, in, in the, the morning. morning. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. I'll give you that one. That's really good. Yes, I, I feel, I'm glad I didn't actually I, screw that up. I feel I feel like the only thing I would criticize if I had to criticize is the fact that he's not the main protagonist. You should have said uh, that because it's not really what the movie's about. This is, I know. This is, this, is, this, is, this is where the... This is that, where that's the, the only thing I knew about it though. So uh, it's probably what, why it worked out better for me. Yeah, well, it was. Yeah, so I'm going to be cr- critical in the sense mm. that it's not really what the movie's about. It's just a scene in the movie with a supporting character, not the main character. Um but yeah, fair enough. I'll give you that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if, if, you, if you did manage to get that, well done. Well done, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, was... yeah. Okay. All right, we got one. I've, I've got, I've got one. I don't know if you've seen it, but I'm going to give it a shot. Anyway. Give it a shot. Because if you turn around, you haven't seen this. You may not. You may have, or you may not have. I'm not sure. Um, I, I suspect probably unlikely, but you may know the movie when I describe it. Okay. Uh, real, real simple. Uh, the training of a young assassin. Training of a young assassin, the Karate Kid. No, um, <laughs> it's the first thing that popped into mind. It could technically be that. Um, <laughs> Mr. Miyagi, kick, it kick, could be kicks to the face. Right? You know, detracting you from your time. <laughs> no, it's all right. <laughs> um, Give you some few seconds for that. Training of a young assassin. It's not Star Wars, is it? No, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Darth Vader killing younglings. I, I'm um, being really, really obvious with that too. Young Robert. assassin. I, Three, I can't. two. Is it Red one. Sparrow. No, no. Oh. It was not a bad guess though. Uh, no, it was Leon the Professional. Oh, of course. Luc Besson, uh, Natalie Portman. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I, I do know of it, but I just didn't. Yeah, because he trained. Totally ends up training, training the girl to, in the, in mm. kind of to be an assassin. She takes interest. So. There's more of a Lolita kind of thing going on there too. But you know at least knew the movie you knew who was in it. Yeah, so. I knew of it, yeah. Knew the general gist of it, I guess. Okay, I'll try this. Yeah, the main character's uncle is the villain where he meets multiple where the main character meets multiple versions of himself. Or different versions of himself. main character's uncle is the villain and the main character meets multiple versions of himself or, or different versions of himself this might be too vague I probably haven't put much thought into this <laughs> <laughs> seems to be your train for today five seconds <laughs> one second yeah, I've got no. yeah spider-man into the spider-verse ah okay yeah that's real obvious yeah, you're right. That's a good. That was a good one. It was a good one. I'll give you that. That's right. that's that was a good, accurately bad described film. That's exactly what happens. The, the, it wasn't the only main bad guy. No, he was a bad guy. He was yeah. a bad guy. Eventually, that. Do 
I, I actually kind of thought that might have been an easy one, to be honest. Uh, okay. This pers- this film is the pursuit of the ultimate original MacGuffin. The first thing comes to mind is Ready Player One, but it's definitely not that. No. That'd be too obvious. In search of the ultimate MacGuffin. The ultimate original, original MacGuffin. MacGuffin. For some reason, Indiana Jones is popping in mind, but it's probably not that either. Nope. Um, fuck, the searching for Five seconds. seconds. Is it Saving Private Ryan? No. Ah. Three, two, one. No. No the idea. The correct answer is the Maltese Falcon. Oh, of Very course. Okay. Yeah. Of course, I do know that, but... That's... <clears throat> um... A guy taking down notes to find out what's happened. Oh, uh, Memento. There we go. Yeah. How long is that? Like five seconds. Five seconds. Well done. So that's one to you. Well, <laughs> technically, I guess. One you've guessed right. One I've guessed right. It's two I haven't. Uh, so this film is a mystery of composed of unreliable narration or narrators oh composed of unreliable narrators it's a mystery first thing that popped to mind was clue but it definitely nope. wouldn't be that no it's worse says, than that oh narrators I'm trying to think of something where I know where there's like a lot of sort of well known people that would probably narrate stuff mm-hmm. but nothing's really come into mind like maybe a Tarantino film, but even then, Three, probably pushing two, it. Three, two, one. No. No. No yeah. idea. Okay, the answer is Con Girl. Oh, of course. Have you seen that? No, I haven't, but I do, I do know enough about it. Yeah. Stun me. That was, a, that was a good round. So the final score, if you weren't keeping score at home, is four to two to Rob. Three for stumping me and one for getting one right. And that is... Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, brings us to the end of episode nine. We hope you've stuck around this long, which hopefully wasn't as long as our last one. No, it wasn't. But if I keep rambling, it will be. Yes. The rise of real time will continue to actually be a real rise. It'll be a, it'll be a rise up of hate and rioting. Right. Anyway, if you did enjoy this episode, go on to like it, subscribe, share it around, all that fancy stuff kids do these days on social media. <laughs> You make it sound like you're so out of date with the social media. I medias, really so. am. <laughs> I just get Facebook's just, my news feed. That's all it is for let's me. Let's see the people share it on Facebook. Yeah, yeah there we go. That's, yeah. that's share good. it around on Facebook. Tell all your friends. Yeah. Just send it everyone on your friend list. I yeah. don't care. Spam people. Yeah. Like, listen to these clips. Make it like a, ch- like, make it a, a chain mail thing. A spam, yeah. yeah. Spam well, your chain mail. Not necessarily spam, but like, you know, one of those chain letters. You, you must you ask forward to five people or exactly, else you may yeah. die. Yeah, exactly. Do do that. Do this. Yeah. Do five, that. Five random people on your contacts list. Don't make it five. Make it everybody. Everybody. If you do not share it with everyone on your contacts list, you will die in seven days. <laughs> seven days. Seven days. Anyway, do all that jazz. Share it. Like it. Subscribe. Follow us on YouTube. Podbean. All that jazz. Yes. Uh, thanks again, always, as usual. I don't always say this. I keep forgetting. But Martin, for our graphics, I do appreciate the hard work you put into them. And um, I try and put them on the links. But I don't mention him on here as much as I do. So, um, yes, if you need some graphic stuff done, he's really amazing. You can find his website on the link below. It's rami.at. And with all that out the way, we will catch you in the next episode on episode 10. Double figures. Whoa. See you then. Bye.